morning, uh, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, uh, everyone, uh, depending on the place from where you're attending. So uh, maybe we can, uh, we can start. And uh, before starting, uh, I just wanted to uh, introduce ourselves, uh, the instructors uh, for uh, this particular uh, training uh, program. So first of all, uh, I would like to, to, to uh, uh, let's say, thank you for, for joining with us. So as already you know that this uh, particular training program is uh, will be or is touching around national uh, cyber uh, crisis management uh, plan. So this is what we will be uh, talking about. Uh, this uh, session uh, is for four hours, and and in four hours we will be uh, taking to a short breaks of uh, ten minutes, and accordingly we will uh, proceed. So. Uh, instructors uh, for uh, this particular uh, training is myself. My name is uh, Dr. Uh, Kelly uh, Smani, and I'm heading the Martian uh, Computer Emergency Response Team. Uh, and along with me, uh, I'm having my uh, colleague, uh, Mrs. Janita Apaya. Uh, she is the Information uh, Security uh, uh, Consultant. So uh, Janita is, is just here, and, and we uh, are two of the let's say, uh, instructors who will be, let's say, uh, going uh, through, uh, let's say, the whole uh, training program. Uh, moving uh, further, uh, how we need to go before, uh, let's say, we go and start talking about uh, this interesting, uh, let's say, topic uh, about, let's say, a cyber uh, crisis management, and in particular, how to uh, develop a uh, cyber uh, crisis management plan, and especially uh, a plan for uh, a country. Uh, then uh, before that, I wanted to, let's say, talk a little bit about what, what we are uh, doing. Uh, and then maybe, and then maybe after, after that, we can, can let's say, go and start uh, talking about, about uh, this whole uh, training program. So we, 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 we are the National CERT, and uh, we operate uh, under the ages of the National Computer Board. Uh, in Mauritius, and which is a, uh, uh, a statutory body under the Ministry of Information uh, Technology, Communication, and, and Innovation. So uh, many of you may know that um, Russian CERT is the second oldest CERT in, in uh, Africa. Uh, we were uh, set up uh, in 2008, and just let's say uh, uh, after a Tunisian CERT, so, uh, term CERT, uh, is the first cert in, in, in Africa. And normally what we do is that we being the national cert, uh, we are uh, driving the uh, national uh, cyber uh, security uh, initiatives in, in the country. And in, in particular, I talk about if let's say capacity building, so Mauritian cert is also uh, driving and, and operating the IQ center of excellence uh, since 2020. And under that, in let's say center, we have been doing uh, different uh, types of our training programs for Mauritius as well as uh, for the countries in the uh, uh, region, especially uh, in Southern Africa and Eastern Africa, uh, as well as uh, there are participants who are joining from all parts of the world into those training programs which have been organized so far. And also being a national CERT, we uh, assist the Ministry of Information uh, Technology uh, in the development of uh, different uh, cybersecurity frameworks, including strategies and, and the policies. Uh, and this is where uh, we are also, uh, let's say, uh, uh, extensively involved in doing that. And uh, we are also the first member since 2010. So uh, this is a little bit about us, uh, that who we are and, and what we are doing. And uh, we are uh, uh, let's say within the first for uh, quite some time, and and we are very much involved into the activities of, of first um, which are, are happening uh, from uh, let's say uh, since two thousand and ten. So uh, coming back to uh, today's uh, exercise and and uh, the whole uh, training program, uh, this is uh, like uh, national cyber crisis management uh, plan in particular. We'll be talking about. And that's, that's the structure like. If, if you look at the structure, so the structure uh, talks about uh, uh, three things in particular uh, we want to talk about. And, and the first one is an introduction to a national uh, cyber uh, crisis management plan. So uh, what is a national cyber uh, crisis management plan? Why it is required, why it is needed, and, and, and 
how it is activated, who are the people uh, should be activating into uh, this, let's say, uh, national uh, crisis management uh, framework once we uh, set it up. Uh, how do we, uh, let's say, have those different types of teams which are set up uh, uh, in any uh, particular uh, national uh, cyber uh, crisis management uh, plan, how these uh, teams, they should be interacting together once there is any kind of national, let's say, a significance. So the idea here is uh, uh, talking around uh, how we will be able to develop the program. We will also be uh, talking, let's say, from the experienced uh, of uh, plan implementation, how we have implemented this particular plan. And maybe uh, what also we will, uh, would like to do is that we will uh, try to uh, keep this uh, training of, uh, very interactive. So uh, we're going to stop in between, uh, let's say uh, participants, they can always ask that, uh, uh, how can we go about it? And, 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 and uh, how it is done. So we can keep on talking. So rather than, because since it's a four hour screening, um, uh, it's, it's, it's a topic of uh, much more than that. Uh, we are delivering the screening of over uh, nine hours, 12 hours uh, into the uh, our ITU Center of Excellence. But since uh, it's just four hours screening program, so we try to be a focused discussion where we are able to make you understand uh, what this plan is all about how will you be able to design this plan? And then how you'll be able to implement this plan and then at last how you'll be able to execute this plan. plan. So that's, 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 that's the approach we should be taking uh, today for this national cyber crisis management plan discussion. So that's a part of the introduction. Uh, second part here is that uh, inside the plan. So incident response and the, and the national, national approach. approach. So, so why, why is incident? What, what is an incident? How, how incident, incident response is important? important. And, and, here, and here we are, we are trying, trying to talk about incident, incident response, response from not only the search and the C-search perspective, but for any team, any team, uh, let's say, set up in uh, ISPs or, or as, uh, let's say any team uh, is set up into IXP, any team uh, set up in RANS, any uh, steam is set up into, uh, let's say, any other organization, any team uh, is set up even a, a P-cert, a product cert. So this this applies, and, and uh, that's, that's what incident response is. But here, at the end of the day, the focus is could be, let's say, a national orientation where uh, how national cyber crisis management plans are developed. We, we need to say again that who could be different stakeholders here, and, and how these stakeholders, they are connecting together in order to execute that plan. So what is the incident response team in that? What is the communication team into that? How these teams are connecting together in order to address if there is any uh, crisis situation into the country. So I think uh, that's, that's the approach we are uh, talking about. So incident response, and here also, because a parallel training right now is running uh, which talks about incident response and classification. So this also connects here. So some of uh, the uh, participants who are here, they might have seen that training also. But uh, our focus is to connect incident response and classification, how in devising the national cyber crisis management plan, uh, rather than just focusing what incident response is and how uh, incident are classified. Because at the end of the day, what also we need to understand is that incident a classification is very, very important once we are talking about a national cyber crisis management because depending on the classification, only you'll be able to address those incidents. So that's where we will be extensively talking here about incident uh, response and the national approach, which should be taken for incident response and especially dealing with the situation of cyber crisis. And the last part here is, the testing, implementation, and maintaining the plan. So how do we test, how do we implement, and how do we maintain? And, and that's uh, an example uh, where, where, where uh, I think we can just uh, take it. And, and, and this example uh, is, is all about the, the, the implementation. So in implementation uh, and testing, different uh, things we could do. We can do uh, some sort of uh, uh, technical simulation exercises. We can do some uh, TTX where uh, these kind of plans, they are, are tested to see. And another important point which we are going to discuss in, uh, let's say, 
this training program is, is also about the governance. So it, yes, this is a national cyber crisis management plan, but how is it has to be governed because a crisis situation is a situation where we need to have a proper governance structure so that at any point of time, if there is such a, a situation into your country, then there is a full fledged structure in order to deal with that. And, and this means that, that there is a committee, there, 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 there is, uh, let's say a team sitting together. So a team sitting together, chaired by somebody. So it means that if it's a national responsibility, then normally what we expect that the top person uh, chairs that because then there's more commitment and then the execution of things that happens much more easily uh, as compared to if somebody, let's say, is chairing that uh, governance, let's say, uh, committee uh, where uh, the person is less influential in a way. So th this we can discuss. So it's not subjective, but that's that's something what we have been, uh, let's say, uh, doing here and what we have done. And this is what we have been talking to people. So uh, this is what uh, the test implementation and, and, and maintaining the plan will be uh, uh, touching on here. And then we'll be giving uh, live examples or, or, or uh, what we have done, uh, let's say, um, in Mauritius, as well as in different countries, how they have been able to, uh, let's say, uh, test and implement and maintain their plans. So uh, different countries, they, they talk uh, and they have uh, uh, the National Cyber Crisis Management uh, Plan in, in with different names, you know. So uh, some of them, they are calling it differently. Some of them, they call National Cyber Incident Res Response Plan. Uh, some of them, they call National Cyber Crisis Management Plan. Some of them, they call it as national, uh, let's say, a disaster, uh, uh, cyber disaster, uh, let's say, recovery plans. So different things uh, and different names. So. Uh, meaning is same, but it's just that how we put together and that's uh, what counts and that's what we will be talking in this particular uh, training uh, program. Okay. So that, that that's the part of the introduction. So uh, uh, now what I'll do is that uh, because um, me and uh, uh, my colleague Janita, uh, we, we are together. So we will be uh, discussing and opening the floor, uh, let's say, uh, time to time. Uh, so to start with introduction to National uh, Cyber uh, Crisis Management Plan, um, uh, I'll pass, uh, let's say, the floor to, to, to my colleague, and then uh, again, I'll come back to you, and then maybe we can uh, discuss more. So uh, maybe, uh, Janita, uh, please uh, take the floor, and then uh, you uh, start with uh, discussing the introduction, and then I take over the part of the, uh, let's say, uh, designing the plan. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Will you be sharing your screen or actually mine? No, you can, uh, I, I can move on. I can just say that uh, uh, I can navigate through. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. And welcome to this training session. And uh, as Kaleem uh, has uh, already mentioned, like, um, uh, we are we are here today to talk about the National Cyber Crisis Management Plan, and uh, this is a very important plan for uh, any country or at the level uh, at the national level. And uh, before going through, uh, uh, let us. Uh, it's very important that we know um, when we are talking about uh, national cyber uh, crisis management. So it's very important that we know what is a cyber incident. So of course, when we will be uh, developing our uh, national cyber crisis management plan, so of course we'll be addressing uh, some of the uh, incidents um, that have a national significance, okay? That, that impacts the, the country or, or that have an impact on, on, at the national level. So uh, I'm sure like uh, many of you might know what is a cyber incident. And uh, just for the sake of, of, of uh, like uh, repeating it, so it is a violation or imminent threat of violation of computer security policies, acceptable use policies or standard uh, security practices. So of course, this is a definition, but it is not limited to that, okay? and. Uh, of course, it is it like it is an event that will threaten 
that will threaten uh, the uh, the security. It will. It it is an event that will threaten the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of information systems or institutional data. Okay, so. Um, any incident, it it won't like it. It will not like uh, uh, limit to like whether it is like an attempt to gain unauthorized access to a system or data, or for example, there may there might be like any like disruption or denial of service, or it it can be like any type of incident, but which. Of course, it will impact on the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of any information systems, which is the core of the, of information security. So, can you move next slide, Kalim? So, what is a significant cyber incident or cyber crisis? When we have to like to uh, develop a national cyber crisis incident, uh, cyber crisis management plan. So when there, there is a cyber incident, which impacts uh, on the country or which has like, a, which result in a demonstrable harm to the national security interests, foreign relations or economy of a country or to the public confidence, public health and safety of the citizens of a country. So, this is a significant cyber incident or cyber crisis. It is when it is, it has some impact on the public health and safety or even on the economy of a country, then there is, we, we can say that it is a significant cyber incident or cyber crisis, which we need to address accordingly so that we are able to cope with it. And uh, it can have like less, uh, we can limit the, the damages it can cause to, to the country or to the economy. Next slide. So that's why that we have to like, when there is any like a, a cyber incident of national significance, we need like something, we, we need to have a plan so that we can go accordingly, so that we can uh, be in a better position to address it and to handle it properly, so that we can limit uh, whatever damages it can cause to, to the economy of a country. So why is there that need for incident response? Today, if we, we see uh, in this, uh, in today's uh, cyber uh, threat landscape, so, uh, the cyber threat landscape has changed drastically uh, like for the past few years. And why is it? Because there is an increasing reliance on technologies that offer many advantages which have improved our economy and quality of life. But at the same time, it is also like it makes us also vulnerable because it, these um, technologies, it can, uh, it can be used to attack our digital infrastructure, which can uh, impact on our national security, on our economic prosperity and public safety. So why that's why there is a need for proper incident response so that we can like uh, address the threat and then limit the damages it can cause to our public health or safety of our country. Next slide. So the dependence of, on well-functioning critical infrastructures. Uh, what is a critical infrastructure? Of course, um, many of you, they might know what is a critical infrastructure, but uh, for those who, like, who, who doesn't know what is a critical infrastructure, it is uh, simply like uh, those infrastructures which like uh, they run essential services. And if there is any impact on these infrastructure, so it this can uh, it can have an impact on on the public safety or uh, the economy of the country. So uh, these critical infrastructures we have, for example, like uh, uh, utility or health. We have um, like telecommunications. So these are like critical infrastructures which run essential services in a country. 
So the dependence on the uh, well functioning of those critical infrastructures. So they point both at the opportunities and vulnerabilities related to the growing use of information and communication technologies. So they run important services, uh, and but at the same time, they are also vulnerable. Uh, they are also vulnerable given that there is that growing use of, of information and communication technologies. Now, many countries, they have to ensure that uh, these uh, critical infrastructures, they are well protected they are well protected so that they can uh, deliver their services properly. And also uh, these services have to be available at all time so that there is, it does not have any impact on the uh, economy of the country or on the public health and safety. So that is why we need to have something like a concrete, so like a plan so that if in case there is any a cyber attack on those critical infrastructures, we, we can have a, like a plan to follow where everything is in place. And then we have all the uh, setup is, is here so that we can address the threat uh, accordingly. And then we can take all the necessary measures. It is just like uh, we uh, like us when the, when, whenever there is a cyclone, so there is a plan which is in place so that the country can implement those measures so that uh, the, the country and, and the uh, public safety is, is um, like, and uh, the country is, uh, is, be, is able to cope with that. And also uh, uh, the public is safe and, and the, uh, the, also the cyclone goes by. Uh, smoothly. So it is really similar uh, like that. When there is a cyber attack, we need to have a, a crisis management plan so that we can uh, like treat it, we can uh, handle it properly and limit the damages it can cause. So um, next slide, Kalim. So uh, the national capabilities for incident response. So national capabilities or readiness, this is very important because it, it establishes how a country will prevent, will protect against those threats, will mitigate, will respond to, and will, and will recover from those uh, cyber threats. So that like uh, the country, as, uh, they should be able to, to have those capabilities. They should be able to cope with those to cope whenever there is like a significant cyber incident, uh, the country should be able to have all the necessary, uh, like uh, uh, not equipment as such, but uh, it should be in a better position to address those, uh, this uh, type of incident uh, accordingly. And uh, some of the uh, national capabilities which will uh, help the country or for example, it should be in a, in a position to have like legal and regulatory measures in place. For example, uh, national laws affecting cybersecurity or international obligations. For example, if for, uh, there is a need to, uh, to, to seek the help of international um, counterparts. So uh, there is uh, to have like uh, an agreement or like uh, as um, MOUs and all, so that they can be, a, they can uh, like help, they can help other country to, to uh, address the threat. And for example, in terms of organizational measures, the country should be able to have organizational measures such as a national cyber incident response plan or national cyber crisis management plan. It should be, it should have like a national cert for the coordination of cybersecurity activities at the national level. In terms of technical measures, the country uh, should have like a forensic capabilities. It should have like um, incident response tools, uh, for example, to, to be able to, uh, to analyze the threats, to be able to, to see where it is coming. So these types of, of measures, the country should be able to have a lab or uh, these kind of tools. 
critical inform uh, information infrastructure protection. This is what we've been uh, talking before, like it should be able to, to be in a better position to protect its critical information infrastructures. Now, financial considerations, uh, for example, uh, the country should be able to, to have adequate budget uh, for cybersecurity. Uh, this is also very important because uh, to implement cybersecurity measures in the country, uh, it should be able to finance those, uh, uh, should be able to have adequate budget to finance those uh, initiatives. In terms of implementation measures, so what we are talking about is that responsibilities and coordination like human resources or finance and, and should be able to have like uh, 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 adequate human resource in place so that uh, if there is any uh, cyber threat, they can be able to, to deal with it. Awareness raising measures and education, this is also important because uh, the population, the public in general, should be able to to have adequate knowledge. They, uh, we should like uh, create an information security culture and and educate the population at large so that they know at least what are the threats and how they can protect themselves. Okay, so uh, in order to be prepared for a cyber uh, security incident of national significance. So it is very important like to understand the level of threat to the nation and, and this can be done in like uh, in different ways, of course. So I'm sure um, you, you, you might be knowing like uh, in order to, to, to know what is the, to, to assess the cyber threat uh, uh, landscape or to assess the cyber threat level to any country. So we can do it by either um, like um, uh, assessing the national cybersecurity landscape. So uh, we have to, to analyze uh, the country's cybersecurity strength and weaknesses. So what, what are the country's strength and, and where it is lacking in terms of measures, in terms of, of resources. So uh, this, is, this can be done in that way. And also like, um, some of the important elements to be considered when we are assessing the national cybersecurity uh, landscape is, for example, uh, what types, what different types of cybersecurity threats that the country is concerned, because not every country is uh, uh, like uh, they, they are like uh, they have the different threat uh, cyber threat level is not like the same for every country for example if if in one country you have like uh, let's say ransomware is like very uh, common so for another country it may it may not it might not be the case so there are different types of cyber security threats that each and every particular country is concerned with so uh, the sources of these threats, for example, whether it is like uh, the country faces uh, organized cr crimes or state-sponsored organizations, or there are like extremist groups, like these types of threats, whether the country is facing or not, okay? Or any like uh, vulnerabilities that may attack critical infrastructure. So. Uh, these all like uh, we, we need to, to, to assess all these elements, all these features so that we can be in a better position to, to know where the country is at the level of the cyber sec uh, at the, at the cybersecurity, uh, like uh, to assess the cybersecurity landscape. So it's very important that we know where the country stands in terms of its cyber threats and, and, and that is uh, where it will allow us to, to to, um, to take the measures, to, to have initiatives so that we can improve that and, and, and develop in our uh, cyber crisis uh, management plan. So um, we've been talking since the beginning about the national cyber crisis management plan. So in fact, what it is about, so we've been able, we've been discussing uh, so far about that so why we need uh, to have a national cyber crisis management plan 
And uh, let me tell you that uh, National Cyber Crisis Management Plan is, this is the name for that plan, but uh, in many countries, uh, we have uh, like different names for that types of plan. In, in, in some of the countries, it is called as, as the National Cyber Incident Response uh, Plan. So some, uh, uh, there are certain countries which uh, refer it as Cyber Crisis Management Plan, but uh, it is like, uh, this is the plan which is, which deals with addressing like a, a cyber incident of a, a national significance. So the aim is the same, but the name can be different. So in general, so what it is an organizational measure, it is an organizational measure and, and it is uh, like a plan which which elaborates on the actions on the responsibilities like uh, to have a coordinated and multidisciplinary approach to respond to and to re recover from a cyber security incident of national significance which can impact on the critical systems of any country so through that plan, uh, we, we have the roles, we have the responsibilities of the uh, different bodies that will allow, that will help the country to respond and to recover from any type of significant cyber incident when it occurs. So this is, that's it. So it is just a plan to, to, uh, to allow the country to, to handle that crisis and to if I like to handle it properly and then to recover it in an effective way. Next. So why we need to uh, to develop that cyber uh, national cyber crisis management plan? So uh, of course it is very important to 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 have that plan uh, uh, at the national level, but the rationale for develop developing that plan is to to have like the roles and responsibilities of the stakeholders well established uh, during a crisis situation because if not then uh, if in case uh, there is any crisis so we don't know uh, uh, what organization or which stakeholder will will uh, look uh, will will be uh, looking after uh, which uh, like aspect so in order to to avoid that uh, confusion that uh, that chaos so it's very important that we have a plan which already defines like a uh, which stakeholder will do what in in time in a time of crisis so then uh, at that particular time that we we already have that plan in place then we can just implement the plan with in order to reduce the limit which uh, that damage that incident can cause Okay, so it is the plan, uh, the, the rationale for developing it is to, we have already the roles and uh, responsibilities of the stakeholders well established. Okay, and also to devise the ways for incident resolution. Okay, to, to already have like, uh, uh, so that we already have in place uh, the, the, way for, uh, so, uh, the way forward uh, to to resolve an incident, okay, and and it will also like uh, this plan will also be used to ensure that information is properly shared uh, between the stakeholders. Okay, it is very important that the proper information is passed uh, to the stakeholders at in a moment of crisis. The right information, accurate information, is passed to the stakeholders, and in the plan we this will allow that uh, proper information sharing to take place and it will also like uh, act, it will also like uh, serve as a basis to improve and coordinate any cyber incident at the at the institutional level and also uh, to set up the communication channel for message passing related to that incident for example in case we need to communicate that incident to the press or we need to communicate that incident to uh, international counterpart. So what are the ways, what are the methods that we have to use 
uh, to go through in order to have that uh, message passed. So it's very important that we define all these procedures in the National Cyber Crisis Management Plan. So as I, I was telling you uh, before, uh, different countries, they have uh, their National Cyber Crisis Management Plan. And, uh, and uh, it is, uh, uh, of course, they, they, they can have different names for, for that. And uh, for example, uh, in Mauritius, we, we, have, we, we call it as the National Cyber Incident Response Plan. Even if you look at the US, so it is called as National Cyber Incident Response Plan. And uh, uh, for Canada, it is like another name. And even for other countries such as Australia, we call it as a Cyber Incident Management Arrangement. So basically it, it, it is the same plan, but with different name. So some of the countries which have been able to set up this plan at the national level are like Mauritius, US, Australia, UK, Canada, and of course there are um, many others uh, uh, which have been able to, 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 to set up this plan. So the objectives of, of this plan is uh, of course, to, to minimize the disruption of services or loss of information caused by incidents. And uh, this is very important that uh, in case there is any uh, cyber incident of national significance, so the operations should continue. So we should not be in a position to stop our activities at the national level. And uh, that's why it is very important that we have a cyber crisis management plan that will allow the country to, uh, to keep on uh, uh, its operation despite there is a, a, a national cyber incident uh, of, of, of like a, a cyber incident of national significance. And also, uh, like we were discussing before, like to elaborate on the actions and responsibilities of different stakeholders, like what, uh, uh, which stakeholders uh, will, will do what in that time of crisis. So it's very important that to, uh, we elaborate those uh, roles and responsibilities in that plan. And of course, to use the information gained for better preparation or for future handling of incidents. So this, um, the plan will also allow uh, the country to, to have their lessons learned. So if there is an incident, so we learn uh, by that incident and then we can take the measures so that this incident does not repeat uh, and, and we, we don't face uh, such situations again. Now, uh, ap applicability of a national cyber crisis management plan. So, uh, how this uh, plan as a whole will be, uh, will, how, how it will be applicable to the country. So, uh, as we were discussing, like it, uh, any cyber uh, crisis management plan or any national cyber incident response plan, it will depend on country to country and it can take any form. So it will depend on the country's objective. It will depend on the country's preparedness. It will depend on many other factors. And uh, uh, of course, on the objectives and level of preparedness or cyber readiness. So it, it, it will depend on that. So it, it will, what it will do is that it will, uh, this plan will be applicable to the public and private sector of any country. So it is not limited to public sector, but as well as the private sector can also use uh, this plan and they can also uh, use this plan as a basis and they can uh, devise their own uh, plan at the, at the organizational level. But the applicability of this plan is, is uh, that it will, it, 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 it is an approach that will will uh, 
will uh, mitigate and respond. It will help to mitigate, it will help to respond, and it will help to recover from a, a cyber incident of national significance. So this is very important. And also what it will do is that it, it, uh, uh, it is a connection between the public and the private sector to address major cybersecurity risk. So through this plan, the private and the public sector, they work together, they collaborate together so that they can uh, be able to, to help the country to overcome that incident and to take those measures in due time so that it is it does not impact the operations of a country. So um, how many of you have, have, have come across a national cyber crisis management plan? Is there any, like uh, um, some of you have, have been able to go through a national crisis management plan? Or um, there are, um, at, at, at your, like, do you have a cyber crisis management plan uh, at, at, at the level of the country? Anyone? Please use the yeah. uh, Q and A box if you want to answer any questions. Have you gone through a national cyber crisis management plan or any national cyber incident response plan? No. So no one wish to talk. Come on, please interact. Uh, no one wish to talk. Okay, don't uh, we have Mustafa. Uh, he's saying uh, they don't have any cyber crisis management plan from his country. Okay. Merci Mustafa uh, pour répondre aux questions. Okay. So, all right. Um, so what in a national cyber crisis management plan, so there, uh, we need to have certain elements in place and uh, there, re there is to have like, uh, uh, we need to, to focus on certain elements so that it becomes like a very uh, coordinated approach to respond to the, to the incident. So it should be a formal, focused and coordinated approach to respond to incidents that provides a roadmap for implementing the incident response capability. So what it does is, is that it, it is like a formal document that we need to develop and then we need to, that will also, um, uh, it will, it will uh, like uh, act as a roadmap for the country so, so that they can uh, they can follow that plan whenever there is uh, any cyber crisis uh, in the country. So what are the some elements of the plan that we should have? Like, uh, what are the main elements of the plan that uh, we need to, to, to know about? Is that we need to have, like any, any other plan, we need to have a vision and mission statement, um, like what are our vision and what are our mission through this plan. We need to have our purpose and objectives of this plan. So what objectives like this plan will achieve. The scope of the policy that is uh, to whom and what it applies and under what circumstances. Definition of cyber incident and related terms because it's very important that we, uh, the cyber incident is defined and this also, it depends on the country to country. So what um, a cyber incident of, of national significance, uh, it, it may be different for, from countries to countries. What, uh, if an incident is critical for one country, it may not be critical for another country. So this depends on countries to countries, okay? 
the roles and responsibilities of stakeholders. So it's very important that in the plan, we, we should be able to, to, uh, to identify, to elaborate on the roles of, of, of stakeholders, on the responsibilities. Also, we need also to prioritize uh, or, uh, or, or uh, like address the severity ratings of incidents. It's very important that we know which incident or which type of incident we, we categorize as high or which, which type of incident uh, will be categorized as medium or low and, and uh, which incident will be, uh, uh, will, will be addressed and, and uh, first. Uh, so that it's very important that we, we prioritize those types of incident. Information sharing and communication methods. So there is, it's very important that we also know when we have to share information. So what are the channels we, ne we need to use and who will be sharing those information so it's very important to address that also. Metrics for measuring the incident response capability and its effectiveness. So how we measure our incident response capability. And uh, uh, this is also very important to, to address in the plan. So uh, these are like some of the main elements we need to, to have in the plan. So if we go like uh, very quickly, uh, so what we mean by vision and mission. So uh, in, a, uh, in any plan or in even in the national cyber crisis management plan. So to, to, to make it successful, we need to have a vision uh, so that uh, all uh, stakeholders associated with that plan, they understand, they know what the, this plan is all about and how it can be uh, how it can be accomplished and and also uh, the plan will impact whom so it's very important that it is already clear at the beginning uh, so that uh, all the stakeholders all the relevant person connected to the plan they know what it is about and what what it will do and uh, uh, when it will be applicable uh, uh, so amongst others. So the clearer the vision, the easier it will be for leaders and key stakeholders to ensure that uh, any incident is, is addressed uh, in a consistent and coherent approach. So it's very important that we, uh, at the beginning itself, we have a clear mission, a clear vision, and also to have a clear vi uh, mission, because this mission will uh, will uh, determine the purpose and the objectives of the plan. So that's why it's very important that at the beginning itself, we have a clear vision and mission statement. Now, uh, purpose and objectives. So of course, like any other plan, we need to have a purpose and objective of the plan. And this should be clearly stated. So uh, as you can see on the screen, so different countries, they have their own different purpose and objectives. So it depends on country to country. The purpose of one country and the objectives, it may not be the same for every country. For example, if you look at this, so we have like uh, USA have one uh, different uh, objectives and Canada for Canada, we have other uh, different objectives. So this is, uh, it, uh, for example, uh, if we look at here, like the object, one of the objective of the cyber, uh, Canada cybersecurity event management plan is to uh, improve cyber event coordination and management, uh, also to mit mitigate threats and vulnerabilities before a compromise can occur. Okay, so this is uh, different. And uh, uh, whereas for US, uh, they say that it, uh, the purpose of this plan is to illustrate a national commitment to strengthening the security and resilience of network technologies of infrastructure. So this is like a difference between countries to countries. So uh, the purpose and objectives might differ. Okay, next. But the scope for the National Cyber Crisis Management Plan 
This is also, uh, it can differ from countries to countries, but you can refer to, uh, to existing national cyber crisis management plan to see how they have defined their scope, okay? So the scope for one uh, country, it uh, may not be the same for other country. For example, um, like uh, the scope of a national cyber crisis management plan is to uh, provide a consolidated approach, national approach to the management and coordination of potential cyber threats or incidents. So it sets out the roles and responsibilities of all stakeholders, critical sectors and other public and private sector in managing incidents of critical in nature. So it, the scope is like it, it will eventually uh, create, it will eventually provide that national approach for addressing any incident of national significance. Okay, next. So the need to define a cyber incident. So uh, this is, I've already mentioned, like uh, it should be clear why we need to define a cyber incident because it also, this also depends on the country to country because if a, an, a cyber incident is like, uh, not all cyber incident will be of national significance. Okay, a, a cyber incident, it, it, it may uh, like differ from country to country. So in that is why it's very important in the, when developing the national cyber crisis management plan, we have that definition, that term of incident, it should be clear. It should be clear and it should, it should also help to, uh, to clarify the roles and, and uh, structures of the incident response team. So it's very important that we define uh, the cyber incident beforehand so that it can help to, uh, to clarify the roles and responsibilities of other stakeholders associated with that plan, okay? So um, stakeholder management, of course, this is very important because in, in any situation where there is a cyber crisis in the country, so the collaboration of all stakeholders is crucial so that the country is able to, uh, to mitigate the threat and you know, uh, able to recover from the threat if uh, like in, uh, in a systematic manner. So it's very important that all stakeholders they join hand together to address the threat so that the damage can be limited so that it does not impact the economy and public health and safety. So that is why we have to address that. Uh, we have to focus on stakeholder management. Uh, we have to, to know uh, which stakeholders will be involved in that, uh, in that uh, cyber crisis. And uh, that is why we need to, to already like uh, put it in, in that plan. And uh, it will help to identify an initial stake, a set of stakeholders. So when we are at the stage of developing that plan itself, we will be able to identify which stakeholders will do what, okay? So this is very important. So examples of stakeholders which will be, no, which normally uh, gets involved when there is any cyber crisis uh, in the country, they, uh, they will include uh, government bodies such as um, the police or the certs or any of the uh, government agencies, critical infrastructure operators. Uh, it depends on the sector which is impacted and also private bodies so, uh, such as we have the telcos, we have uh, any other private bodies that will help in in the, the uh, result uh, in the resolution of, of the incident and uh, in the in the drafting of the plan uh, we should bear in mind that the roles should be clarified and outlined how they will collaborate in order to manage expectations throughout the, the process in order to achieve success 
So it's very important that we clearly have the roles of the stakeholders uh, which will be involved in the resolution of the incident properly defined. So this will help in, 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 the, uh, in the faster resolution of the incident. Uh, so examples of stakeholders which are normally involved in a cyber crisis uh, include law enforcement, like the police, we have private sectors, such as uh, critical sectors, we have internet service providers, we have telcos, we have vendors, and uh, other stakeholders. This is like uh, insiders, but we have other stakeholders which can be international counterparts, such as foreign law enforcement agencies or international, other international certs that will help in the resolution of the incident. So if you look at the screen, you can have an example which have been taken from the uh, Canada Cyber Security Event Management Plan. So the, it, 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 it is clearly listed like the what are the stakeholders which will be involved, which, which play a key role in, in uh, if there is any uh, cyber crisis uh, at the level of the country. So it is clearly mentioned who are the stakeholders which will form part of that uh, of that uh, of the resolution of that incident? Now, uh, if we talk about the governance, so for any uh, cyber crisis, uh, we need to have like a body which takes the decisions, the timely decisions, and 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 when there is a cyber crisis. Uh, at the level of the country. So there is to have like a, a body responsible to take timely decisions so that the, inci so that the incident can be uh, resolved faster and, and, and decisions can be taken. So it is not that when that uh, incident happens, then they will decide who will take the decisions, but then it, it, is, uh, it will take too much of time then the damage can be, it can uh, create lots of damage. So if we already define like who will be the body taking decisions at that particular moment when there is a cyber crisis, so this will help in uh, taking timely decisions at the right uh, time. So during a cyber security event, the timely engagement of appropriate level of governing bodies will focus on both management and operations to prevent, detect, and respond to and recover from any cybersecurity event in a prioritized manner. So we already have that committee or that uh, body to take the decisions already set up in place beforehand. And when there is any cyber crisis occurring, so we know that th this body will be taking the decisions. And then there will be like a, a speedy decisions to be uh, can be taken can be taken, and then this will also uh, help to to limit the damage that that incident can can uh, can uh, can do. Okay, so uh, for example, in many countries uh, there are bodies, uh, there are committees that have been set up. If you go through any national cyber crisis management plan or any national cyber incident response plan. So you will see in the governance section, so there are bodies which have been set up that will be responsible for taking up decisions uh, at that particular uh, crisis, moment of crisis. So examples of governance bodies include, um, you can have the cybersecurity committee or executive management team, national cybersecurity committee, Cybersecurity Council, Cybersecurity Advisory Council, or co event coordination team, just to name a few. So this is not limit limited. So we have other names as well, but the, the purpose is the same. Their objectives are the same and is to take timely decisions uh, during that moment of crisis. So, um, we also uh, need to have an incident response coordinating team 
uh, which will be responsible for the incident resolution. So this, I think Kalim will be elaborating much more in detail in the part two. So uh, on the incident response coordinating team. So this is also very important that we have it uh, uh, already uh, clearly uh, mentioned in the plan. So who will form part of the incident response coordinating team to, uh, to respond to that incident of, of um, uh, national significance. And of course, whoever forms part of the team will, will should have specialized knowledge, should have experience in various level of, of uh, uh, cybersecurity in technical areas, such as forensics or intrusion detection, so that they can be able to carry out the incident response um, like uh, uh, incident resolution uh, properly. Next. So uh, here also uh, we have taken an example of the Canada uh, security event management plan. So as you can see in this on the screen, so uh, how the incident response coordinating team will be uh, will be uh, like who forms part of that and uh, how they will be acting. So there are different levels. So this is also will be discussing in depth in the part two. So what you need to know is that uh, the incident uh, response coordinating team can consist of, of, of various members from different uh, agencies such as uh, law enforcement, CERT, or ISPs or public safety or the forensic department. So this team can be can uh, consist uh, members from different other uh, uh, different other agencies, so that uh, the team can have like a mix of of expertise and not and 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 uh, spe uh, special uh, specialties, so that they can handle that incident properly. And uh, other stakeholders as well can be involved, but this depends on the nature of the incident. Okay. So uh, this is again an example taken from the US. So uh, in the US, the incident the response coordinating team is known as the Cyber Unified Coordination Group. And of course, um, there are many um, like uh, stakeholders involved in that, in that gr group, which will be convened whenever there is any cyber crisis. Mm. So uh, determining the incident severity level, this is also very important to mention, like uh, how, um, uh, like whenever there is a cyber crisis, so what, how the team will determine the incident severity level and based on that uh, incident severity level, what type of decisions will be taken. So uh, this is very important to to, to uh, determine, to, to already have it in the plan, how the incident severity level will be determined and on which factors, and on which factors and, and, and how they will, how uh, the team will be able to know whether it is an incident of high severity or medium severity or low severity. So it's very important that it is mentioned in the plan how the, incident response team will be able to determine the severity level. So uh, this is another example taken from the US. So this is also will be uh, discussing in depth on the part two. So how to determine the incident severity level. So I think uh, Kalim will be elaborating more on that uh, in the part two. So I just, uh, this we can skip it and then uh, you will have it in the part two of, of this uh, training session. So next slide, Kalim. Information sharing and communication methods. So uh, as I have been uh, telling you, it's very important that we already have it clear, like what will be our communication methods, how we will be able to share information whenever there is a cyber crisis and uh, who will be sharing that information, where, where, uh, what protocol we will be using to share information, 
For example, uh, in many countries, we have uh, like the traffic light protocol, which is being used to share information. And, and this is created in order to facilitate greater information sharing. So, and also we use the TLP so that we ensure that uh, sensitive information is shared with the appropriate audience. So as you, you may note that uh, any uh, cyber in incident is, uh, there are many uh, sensitive details. Uh, there are many, uh, uh, it, is, it involves like uh, uh, confidential information at times, so which we won't uh, have to share with others. So how we'll be able to know which information to share with which audience. So this we can be, uh, we can use the TLP for doing that. And that is why in uh, when developing the National Cyber Crisis Management Plan, it is very important to have all these uh, communication methods and information sharing methodologies already uh, put up, uh, already put up in the plan so that it can allow uh, uh, like uh, quicker incident uh, information to be passed to relevant uh, parties. Next slide. So uh, some of the um, like uh, parties for sharing uh, information involve, uh, we can have like other incident response team like uh, uh, international counterparts, we can have internet service providers or even uh, software vendors like we can share information with software vendors or law enforcement agencies such as the police so these are some of the uh, parties which we may share information whenever there is a cyber crisis uh, at the level of the country so um, this is the end of the part one so um, the part one is uh, just to give you an introductory uh, about the uh, what the National Cyber Crisis Management Plan is all about and what are the main elements that we should be including in the plan. So uh, the part B of this training session, uh, which will be uh, uh, delivered by Kalim, will, will be like a more in depth on the what's inside the plan and what will be uh, how you can um, uh, what what are the main uh, like uh, how you should go uh, uh, about with the plan and and this will uh, gives you an a more in uh, insight uh, knowledge about the uh, about developing the national cyber crisis management plan so then we can uh, we'll have a break Kalim. Yeah, okay, so uh, if there is any question, so we'll be happy to, uh, to, to attend the question. So uh, even you can uh, send us your questions in the chat box if you don't wish to, to talk. So the floor is open. So whoever uh, has any questions, so they may, uh, they may send their questions in the chat box and then we will uh, answer accordingly. Thank you. Even you can raise up your hands uh, if you wish to talk. So you can raise up your hands and then you can uh, talk with us. No issue. Yeah, any questions? No? I think there are no questions, Kalim. So what we do? We, um, no, I open it there and then just, it closes itself. Okay.
It's okay. Yeah. So, uh, th thank you, uh, Jenica. I think uh, we can we can uh, keep it interactive. Jenica can just. It's already. So we can. There's an echo. I think you have to close your mic. Okay. Good. We can keep it in there. Does it echo? No, it's, it's good. Yeah. So. We, we we can keep it interactive if you're having any questions we can uh, we can uh, take it up uh, so feel free to ask anything whatever uh, you have in mind so uh, we can discuss uh, much more so that uh, we want to uh, make the session in such a way that uh, is much more uh, uh, in a way you understand things uh, rather than uh, we uh, are talking and, and exactly we're trying to, uh, let's say, make you understand as much as possible that how the whole plan is, is, is applied. But at the same time, uh, if you ask questions, then I think we'll be in a better position to uh, explain more outside the box what we're talking on, on the slides. So it looks like that there are no questions. Uh, if in case there are no questions, so uh, is uh, exactly uh, quarter past noon UTC time and then uh, we will uh, take a short break of 10 minutes and we'll get back to you with the uh, second part of the discussion on to uh, the uh, how to design and the, the uh, national cyber crisis management uh, plan so but before uh, closing Janita mentioned uh, uh, two three thing uh, important things uh, which we need to uh, understand uh, whenever uh, let's say we are going for the plan implementation uh, one important thing is that we need to have the uh, the governance structure uh, this is important and 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 also uh, other other component is that we need to identify the stakeholders uh, carefully and because uh, the better way we uh, identify the stakeholders uh, the best we will be able to uh, implement the plan. So it will be uh, effective, it will be efficient, and we'll be able to manage uh, incidents of national significance much more, uh, let's say, efficiently and effectively, uh, because ultimately what will happen is that most of the stakeholders will be uh, involved and they will be uh, connected. So uh, every stakeholder has a role uh, to play. And, and, and for doing that, this is where some sort of a, a risk assessment comes into picture that uh, once uh, you go for a national cyber uh, crisis management plan then in that case you need to carry out the risk assessment to see that who are the stakeholders who are connected uh, or who should be connected to uh, the uh, your whole framework of uh, incident response or cyber crisis uh, let's say a plan or, or cyber crisis framework so that uh, once uh, if in case there is uh, such a situation uh, uh, let's say uh, is in the country and then all these stakeholders they could uh, play an important role so uh, having said this uh, i think it's time for us to break for, for a little while you can stretch your legs and uh, let's say uh, take a cup of coffee or tea and then uh, come back uh, let's see again uh, in, in 10 minutes so uh, in the open so uh, guys uh, uh, welcome back again uh, i hope everyone is here uh, i could see uh, some uh, 17 participants so before uh, now once again uh, before going uh, to the next uh, session where we can uh, talk about how to design uh, the national uh, cyber crisis management uh, plan so if you still uh, i think uh, you have any questions uh, you can uh, put up an, uh, into the chat or or even you can raise your hand and then uh, we can uh, talk about it so whenever you feel like uh, talking uh, just uh, please uh, raise your hand uh, and then uh, maybe uh, we can uh, let's say uh, take your que uh, questions and then uh, we can talk about it so so moving uh, moving 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 uh, ahead uh, part two uh, that's what inside the plan and inside a response the, na the national approach uh, janita has been uh, talking that uh, how do we go for uh, designing uh, this whole national uh, cyber crisis management uh, plan. And as right in the beginning, I was, I was talking about, and I was saying that uh, incident response, incident uh, classification, uh, incident, uh, incident categorization, uh, incident uh, prioritization, 
uh, is an important factor into any national, uh, let's say, a cyber uh, crisis uh, management plan. So that has to be done. How that has to be done? Uh, that also uh, it was mentioned into the previous, uh, let's say, a discussion where Janita mentioned that uh, we have to have a TLP, traffic light protocol, that we can use for categorization of the uh, type of information that uh, needs to be uh, uh, shared. And that's where uh, information uh, sharing and information sharing platform also uh, comes into a uh, picture. So with uh, that uh, understanding uh, for you people, uh, we can continue talking uh, and to see that how we will be able to uh, design the plan. So uh, we can go uh, slowly for you to understand step by step uh, so that you understand how it happens, okay? Uh, so the next uh, here, uh, is developing. So th this is what I said that how uh, we can develop a national uh, cyber crisis management plan. And the focus of discussion uh, here is the uh, incident uh, response life cycle. So many of you um, must be knowing because those who are coming here from the uh, CERT and the CERT uh, community, uh, for them, it is very uh, clear that uh, what incident uh, response cycle means that how uh, incident uh, normally is 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 reported is is analyzed and then uh, it is contained and um, after the containment how is uh, incident is resolved and then uh, finally uh, how the incident is is closed so uh, that cycle we are talking about and, and that cycle is one of the let's say uh, integ integral uh, part of uh, any uh, national cyber uh, crisis management plan, okay? So uh, if you uh, see uh, the uh, basis of categorization of information, as I mentioned before, is the traffic light protocol, okay? So if uh, I get back to the uh, next slide, uh, this is uh, where uh, something uh, we can uh, talk about it, different uh, types of uh, incident handling frameworks are available. Uh, NIST, NIST is already there, uh, SANS is there, uh, ISO uh, 27005 is there, uh, ITU uh, incident response framework is there, uh, even uh, let's say uh, the, the power of, uh, of first uh, services uh, framework uh, is, is there. So there are many more in fact. So all these are uh, different uh, incident hand handling framework and, and, and depending uh, upon the uh, search and the C search, uh, what they normally uh, want to, uh, let's say, uh, follow, or even any other uh, organization wants to follow any approach or any uh, framework for uh, incident handling that could always be uh, done. But now <coughs> our focus, sorry, is here is that how these uh, or how this incident handling framework can be used uh, for uh, our uh, uh, cyber crisis management uh, plan uh, design. And that's what we are saying that these frameworks could be used, okay? Now, <coughs> once I got about the uh, process of incident handling, um, these are the steps already uh, I talked about it. But uh, now um, if I say, uh, as per this cycle, what we're uh, going to follow, one is preparation, uh, detection and analysis. Uh, containment, uh, eradication, recovery, and, and uh, post-incident uh, activity. So that, that's the normal cycle uh, of the incident response, uh, which uh, is a kind of a traditional cycle, which we all know, okay? Now, uh, as you may be knowing, uh, that, that that's the cycle looks like, uh, if you see. So uh, preparation, uh, this uh, talks about how you uh, prepare for an incident and and, uh, preparing for an incident, there are different things here. So uh, preparation means that any team, uh, any team which is, let's say, handling uh, incidents, so how that team should be, let's say, having the uh, proper uh, policies, the tools, and then the, the standard operating procedures uh, already in place in order for that team to prepare for that incident handling. Same thing applies here. So, uh, and, and the, the same thing needs to be reflected also into your cyber crisis management plan because th that, that's a kind of a cycle. And ultimately, uh, what uh, is the understanding here is 
when we are uh, talking about this plan, so uh, this plan leads to what? This plan leads to the resolution of a critical incident at the end of the day. So if your country, uh, let's say, is hit by uh, a kind of a, a critical attack and, and that critical attack has done a considerable damage to, let's say, your infrastructure of your country, could be to the critical infrastructure, could be any other infrastructure which is considered as critical, then in that case, uh, this plan uh, normally, uh, let's say, uh, is applicable. And that's what uh, Janita mentioned about it. So preparation is this, okay? Now, detection and analysis. So uh, again, important uh, element in any particular, uh, uh, the incident uh, plan is to have as part of the cycle of incident handling, detection and analysis. So how an incident is detected. So that also a kind of, uh, uh, let's say process you need to, uh, to have. And then um, secondly, you need to have that kind of expertise also where your uh, people who are managing and handling incidents, they have the know-how, how to detect and how to analyze. And any incident handler who is sitting into any organization handling the incident, he has to know this. And that's what comes to the part of detection and analysis, okay? So how an incident is detected. Next one, how is it analyzed? So now we need to analyze it. So analyze it means that that's why we will uh, we were also uh, and and we have discussed a little bit about um, Janita mentioned about classification. How do you classify it? So whether the incident uh, is uh, highly critical, where the incident is uh, critical, then the, whether uh, let's say uh, after that uh, whether uh, the incident is is uh, another uh, form of let's say a uh, criticality. So from high to uh, let's say uh, medium and to the, let's say, low uh, criticality. So high criticality, medium criticality, and low criticality. So these are different, let's say, severity scales, which already uh, you may be knowing. And based on to these scales only, we <clears throat> do the categorization when, and we do the classification. And based on to the classification, which we have, then we try to analyze the incident, okay? Now what is next? So after detection and analysis, if we see, then we are talking about how the incident is contained. This is uh, uh, another uh, part of the cycle and which we need to understand. And uh, uh, it has to be uh, because any incident which uh, strikes or, 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 or hits any system that has to be contained uh, ultimately at the end of the day. So here also we talk about the containment and then actions taken to eradicate the incident. So eradication is also this is a part of the incident handling cycle because we need to remove it. So once it's removed and then that's where it leads to the uh, recovery of from that incident. So how do you recover from the incident? So that, that's the next step. And this step uh, is into the category of containment, uh, eradication and recovery. And that's where we are saying that uh, that's a part of let's say our uh, another uh, phase of uh, incident uh, handling uh, cycle, okay? And then uh, the next one is the post-incident activity, the actions taken after the incident. And uh, this particular, uh, uh, let's say, uh, flow uh, applies uh, in different forms. So if we talk about NIST, if we talk about uh, SANS, if you talk about ISO, if you talk about, let's say, ITU uh, incident handling framework, if you talk about, let's say, uh, even, to a certain extent, uh, the uh, flow services framework. It, it, it allows you to uh, do that, but uh, maybe the approach is different, okay? So depending on the needs, depending on the situation, depending on the type of organization um, you have, you can always apply that. But now our focus here is uh, in terms of, let's say, this is a national, uh, let's say, uh, plan where there has to be a standard practice which needs to be followed by any team who will be responsible for handling incident when there is a crisis situation. So that's one flow, okay? Now let me elaborate a little bit more onto uh, this uh, flow. So preparation, so preparation. So there's some key points which I wanted to, to, to pick up uh, from uh, this slide uh, is if you see, uh, we are uh, talking about, uh, 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 sorry, uh, we, uh, I think uh, uh, here, if I can uh, 
take some sort of uh, uh, pens. So uh, here, so I mean, uh, I'm, I'm much more uh, uh, interested. Uh, look, if if uh, uh, here this part. So we we are saying that uh, uh, what it normally uh, a preparation is based on uh, policies, the tools, and the procedures, uh, and effective uh, governance and the communication plan. So th that what uh, we need to have. So uh, 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 policy means that we need to have an incident handling policy. That's what policy means here. An incident handling policy uh, clearly spells out that uh, how we will be handling incidents. And same thing, we have to have it into your, let's say, national cyber crisis management plan. Now the tools, tools are again important because uh, until or unless you do not have the tools, how will you handle the incidents, right? So that's what uh, tools mean. So tools means that we are talking about the analysis tools, we are talking about the reporting tools, we are talking about the forensic tools. Um, we are talking about monitoring tools. So we are talking about the information sharing uh, platform. We are talking about uh, here, uh, the security operations center from where, uh, let's say, uh, uh, they are feeding to our uh, information sharing platform. So uh, the, the, these kind of things we are talking about. Procedures means that um, standard uh, operating procedures. So uh, if it is, uh, let's say, a ransomware, or if it is a DOS attack, or if it is a DDoS attack, or, or, or if it is a malware or or it's a rootkit or it could be a zero day or it could be apt whatever it is okay so for that procedures are important the so procedures are written and and that will be the part of this uh, cyber crisis management plan because here in cyber crisis situation uh, we are talking about systems which are really uh, critical for the country and where if those kind of systems if they are attacked then definitely the country doesn't work it means um, I'm talking about, let's say, uh, electrical grid. I'm talking about uh, water supply. I'm talking about telecommunication systems. I'm talking about, let's say, uh, uh, right now, we are having a COVID all around the world. So I'm talking about the health systems. So these, these, these kind of systems for that, and, and this is what uh, and why the reason for the countries to come up with the National Cyber Crisis Management Plan is this, OK? So the, the, these procedures needs to be there. Effective governance, right? And why effective governance? Because uh, th there is a layering and Janita has been talking about, there are different, let's say, uh, 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 level of understanding here because uh, th th there are top, th there's a top management, there are technical people, there's a communication people. So it means that everyone has the role to play because once there is that kind of a situation in the country, then a technical team doesn't have time to communicate. Technical team cannot take decisions. It has to come up from up. So if it has to come from up, we should be having effective governance framework or effective governance in place. And meaning to say that uh, what this, uh, let's say governance means, uh, Janita, she has been talking. She has been saying that we can have a national cyber security committee. You can have a national security council. You can have an, any other a national uh, uh, apex committee, uh, which uh, let's say oversees the whole, uh, let's say uh, uh, coordination of that kind of an incident. Uh, if that type of incident strikes the country or attack, uh, let's say uh, happens, okay? So that's what effective governance uh, means uh, uh, here. And, and that's uh, what we are uh, trying to uh, uh, talk about, okay? Now, uh, if also uh, I move on, uh, and, and then it also implies that necessary controls are in place to recover and continue operations after an incident is uh, discovered. That's again, the part of, uh, let's say, uh, preparation. This is again important. So if, if I say necessary controls, what does it mean? Necessary controls and and these necessary controls. What does it mean? Is that we 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 have, uh, uh, for example, uh, kind of a tool to 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 controls. So it means that we we have that control so that if there is analysis to be done, we have different types of let's say tools available. So necessary controls are in place to recover because if we do not have those controls and and then uh, to recover means that we are talking about uh, uh, let's say a full fledged uh, procedure whether we have it or not. 
Okay, so that's that. That's what uh, we need to uh, understand out of uh, the preparation, right? So the country is prepared and have the procedures in place uh, in the event of a cyber incident of national significance. So now uh, one point to be taken here is that uh, for preparation, what it means is that it is clearly spelled out into that particular plan, who does what. So who does what, this is one. Uh, I mean, if I need person X, uh, where I'm going to get that person? Do I have his uh, contact details? Uh, do I know that whether that person, uh, let's say, uh, 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 will be available in terms of, let's say, if there's a rostering kind of a thing done. Now, there is also a protocol set where if there is a kind of a national, uh, let's say, uh, incident uh, where uh, if in case is of that kind, so the persons, those who are or the part of that team, they should not be moving out very far from their houses, for example, if let's say telecommunication lines are down, how I'm going to go and let's say, take that person. So I need to uh, ensure that that person, he already understands that he will be around his house or let's say in his house so that you know, I can ask somebody to go and pick him up. And then he comes back, let's say, in order to manage that incident. So this kind of preparation we are talking about because you never know that what kind of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, disruption is there and, and what kind of incident that instructs your country. So if your uh, telecommunication lines are fully down, you can't even communicate. So this, this sort of, uh, let's say, um, uh, this dimension and this kind of a magnitude of uh, this document is. So that's what we need to understand here at how it works, okay? Now, let, let, let me move on a little bit. So if I go here in the uh, preparation, and I think uh, this is a very good slide, and, and uh, Janita has been uh, uh, talking about it, and, and, and that talking was much more in terms of the legal and the regulatory measures, right? Uh, legal and regulatory measures. And um, uh, we, we need to have that, and that uh, legal and regulatory measures, the national laws affecting cybersecurity and international obligations. So why you need that even in the legal and the regulatory measures you can have the setup of this apex committee which we are talking about so let's say national cyber security committee so this is already set up into the law so then it functions the way it has been set it up so not necessarily it has to be in law but if it is in the law then definitely let's say it's much more structured now organizational measures she mentioned she mentioned that uh, setting up of a national cert or, or, or any other uh, incident response, let's say a team, and, and the, also the development of the uh, plan. And that's what we are talking about here. Technical measures, this I think uh, she clearly uh, uh, discussed. Mm, what are they? Uh, different types of tools, different uh, types of, of forensic, uh, let's say, uh, tools and, and the forensic hardware uh, availability, uh, the labs and people are trained. A forensic analyst, uh, they, 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 they are there. Uh, plus also we have people uh, from the cybersecurity side of, let's say, understanding, they uh, understand incident response very well. Law enforcement is also trained. So this is all like kind of a combination and mixture. Once they uh, are uh, sitting together, they'll be able to do it better. Now, also other thing is awareness raising measures and education. This is again uh, important. Why it is important because uh, we need to understand, we need to know that uh, what we are doing. And if the person who is going to be involved or who is involved, he knows that what he has to do. Plus also other people, those who are around, they need to understand that what will be their role once this kind of situation evolves. So that, that, that's the part of the uh, preparation. Okay, now the detection and analysis. Uh, that's something also uh, important uh, because ultimately uh, the, the uh, expertise which we need to have in the team uh, who will be the incident response team and the incident response team is one of the, uh, uh, let's say team or teams uh, which form part of, let's say, the, the, the uh, let's say national uh, cyber uh, crisis management plan, okay? So uh, that's, that's the part which comes into detection and analysis. So we need to understand how we'll be able to uh, detect and analyze the incident. Then only we'll be able to, uh, let's say, eradicate that. 
So this is one of the most challenging phase to detect successfully detect an incident and if so, the type extent and magnitude of the problem. So it means that uh, if we uh, talk about um, the, the uh, type of malwares uh, which, which comes and sits into this data system and they start, let's say, uh, slowing down the whole, uh, uh, let's say, functioning of those kind of systems and, and then they finally crash. So what kind of, uh, let's say, threat, not threat, what kind of, uh, let's say, malware or, or a virus which is sitting inside, which is, let's say, slowing it down, um, that's what we need to, uh, let's say, analyze and detect. Okay, so first of all, detect and then analyze that what kind of uh, malware is this and what kind of damage it is doing. So that, that, that's what comes from the detection and analysis. So after an incident is uh, detected, an initial analysis should be uh, performed to determine the incident scope, such as which networks, systems, or applications are affected, who or what uh, originated the incident from where it has come, or they say, uh, what has caused this incident to happen and how the incident uh, is, is uh, occurring, what tools or attack methods are being used, um, if uh, let's say any vulnerability that has been uh, exploited. So uh, all this is the part of detection and analysis, okay? So I'll move on uh, here, uh, maybe uh, I'll be quickly uh, summing up this uh, slide, uh, which I think uh, already you understand and have an idea, uh, sources through which an incident may be detected because um, we need to have this uh, tools uh, in place or we need to implement uh, different tools uh, in, in order to detect the incident. So uh, basics of them, uh, IES, IPS, uh, CM, that's the uh, security information event management. Um, this is much more like a, a let's say, uh, log analysis tool, um, which uh, very much, uh, let's say, forms part of the uh, security operation center, because security operation center, they monitor the threat, they capture the threat, and they uh, log that threat, they analyze the threat, and after the analysis, they try to uh, eliminate that threat. So that's, that's what detection analysis is. So, uh, and, uh, this is where we have been talking about to have the technical measure and technical measure is this, okay? So antivirus software, uh, file integrity, uh, checking software, logs, third party monitoring services, uh, information on new vulnerabilities and exploits. So that's where uh, different feeds uh, are going to help us where we can have these different feeds, uh, let's say, uh, subscribe into our system. We are watching onto that. And, and then um, if there is any uh, vulnerability which is critical, then that could be addressed accordingly using, let's say the workarounds of that vulnerability or the advisory of that vulnerability. Once it is, let's say issued, uh, we can uh, take it up. And then because that also happens uh, fast because if there's any vulnerability which is critical, so then vendors, they try to uh, find it out its advisory as soon as possible and release it so that all the users who are using those systems, they will be able to, uh, back their systems uh, accordingly, okay? Uh, people from inside and outside. So uh, these are all uh, ways of uh, detection and analysis, okay? Now, uh, uh, attack vectors may be through the web, the email, uh, removal media. So uh, meaning to say that from where it has come. So uh, that, that also we need to uh, uh, detect and, and analyze that through uh, which, uh, let's say, uh, uh, way, uh, our systems were infected. We either could be a number of ways because it could be, uh, let's say, uh, this is all we mentioned here, okay? Um, this phase <coughs> also includes the declaration and initial, initial classification of the incident. And uh, classification, <coughs> anyway, uh, uh, <coughs> sorry guys. So uh, initial classification um, of the incident. So classification is important. That, that's what we are saying. And the incidents have to be classified and how they'll be classified. Uh, I will talk about it, let's say uh, after some time. And that's a part of the discussion here itself, okay? Now the initial analysis uh, should provide enough information for the team to uh, prioritize subsequent activities, right? Uh, such as containment of the incident and deeper analysis of the effects of, let's say, uh, the incident, which also helps in uh, determining whether 
the incident is of national significance or not. So uh, that's where this particular uh, the crisis management plan uh, talks about. So it means what we are trying to do here is we have the classification and we have the prioritization. So the moment we have the classification and the prioritization, so classification means that there is an incident category. And uh, one good example I can give it to you if you go and look at the mitre attack uh, taxonomy. So this, let's say, talks about the different types of attacks. So already there's a classification for uh, us to take it from that particular, that's a wonderful document anyway. So if those, let's say, countries and, 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 and all of you who are uh, present here and, and, and trying to understand that, uh, how, how it works, then uh, in that case, we can take that uh, taxonomy and after taking that taxonomy, it will be easier for us to uh, classify uh, incidents and then accordingly, let's say, go for their uh, severity level uh, definition that what is, let's say, critical, what is less critical, and then accordingly you define. So that's, that's the part what we need to do into detection and analysis, okay? So uh, why incident is to be classified? I think already we have discussed uh, uh, why there's a need be because accordingly uh, the whole uh, basis of handling that type of incident and uh, let's say also uh, deciding whether this incident is of critical in nature or not. So this is a reason. Another reason uh, uh, I say uh, is uh, there for classifying the incidents, okay? So uh, these are uh, the part of the detection and analysis. Now, if you uh, see incident classification, it's just like, uh, this is a plain example. Uh, if you uh, look at the uh, uh, mitre uh, attack taxonomy, that's very bulky. So uh, virus, the worms and the spyware uh, in that category, I'm having the malware families. Um, now, sequel injection, root flows. Uh, so that's the part of the infusion. Uh, we can classify this way as well. Uh, identity theft and the scams. So that's, that's the part of the fraud. So we can, we can uh, also uh, uh, classify uh, in these lines, uh, security breaches and authorized access. So uh, these are all different uh, examples of incident classification. So that's how we need to, and, and we should be classifying it. And uh, once you classify, then after the classification, the next step uh, should be defining the let's say it's priorities or a severity, okay? So uh, that's uh, what I say, the severity level after incident analysis, that's the uh, next thing we are going to look at it. The potential danger and urgency for responding the incident, that's, that's the priority, uh, I just say. The functional and information impact of the incident. So this also we need to, that's what analysis means. So once we need to analyze, so with analysis, what is going to come out is that, what is the impact like of that incident? So with that impact, we will be able to know that what is its criticality factor. And accordingly, let's say, we are going to respond to that incident handling and resolution. And also the level of investment or resources required to respond to the incident. This is also important because why it is important? Because we need to be equipped. And once we are equipped um, with the tools, with the, let's say, uh, controls and um, with the people uh, who should be the right people to handle uh, the incidents, uh, example is incident uh, handlers. And once you have these kind of people in the team uh, and they're required for, uh, let's say, doing the incident handling. So uh, this is also a, a point to be uh, considered once we are talking about the analysis of any particular incident, which forms the part of the incident handling cycle. And uh, here, uh, as I said, uh, some criteria for determining the severity level, uh, yes, uh, impact, functional information, uh, uh, recoverability. Uh, so function means incidents that may impact the business functionality of a, a nation. Uh, that's uh, a DOS attack of a uh, site defacement. Uh, that's into this category. Not only this kind of category you can have, you can have your own categories defined. 
So uh, this is one uh, just let's say format or a template or, or an example, whatever you uh, call it as, but there are different ways of let's say uh, defining the severity level. So means you can classify uh, as per the incident types only or, or as per the let's say threats uh, and then you can define its severity levels. It means uh, impact of course for that threat you have to have its impact and then as per the impact then we have to define its severity level okay so that, that, that that's something uh, how uh, let's say uh, it, it, it works uh, and and here also if you see uh, information in in that category instance may affect the confidentiality uh, integrity and availability of uh, nation's information so um, uh, that's also uh, because cia uh, anyway is the uh, let's say uh, basic principle or principles of cyber security and at the end of the day any information uh, is is at stake when it's let's say confidentiality or integrity and availability is is at stake so that part also uh, we need to uh, talk about and the example which uh, we have given here is malicious attack uh, gathering a sensitive information it means that uh, th there is an attack and out of that attack uh, the government uh, sent uh, data center is, is attacked and then the information is pulled out from from there so that's what uh, information uh, impact here means now uh, the recover uh, recoverability from uh, let's say recovery we are having the recoverability the size of the incident and the type of resources it affects will determine the amount of time and resources that must be spent on recovering from that incident so uh, in some instances it is not possible to recover from an incident because this is also important because and those who are into incident handling here and sitting they they, they, they know that for uh, incident uh, resolution uh, we 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 have the different kpis which we need to set so these uh, KPIs are, 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 are set and, and these KPIs, what they do is that they normally help us to uh, resolve an uh, incident, uh, let's say in a short period of time. But uh, we should not forget that any incident resolution or any incident uh, or incident resolution has um, or may have number of dependencies. So <clears throat> the more dependencies we have, the more time it will take. The less dependencies we have, the less time it will take. So if I need to reach out to my ISP within my country, then the resolution time will be faster. If I need to reach other ISP outside my country, the resolution time will be longer because I need to go through diplomatic channel or any other channel through which uh, I need to reach out to that particular ISP who is outside my country in another country. And then we need to request them. And then let's say the information we get. So uh, this all depends. And, and that's why uh, we, we talk about the recoverability, okay? Now also uh, here, uh, uh, th thus uh, the scale, uh, different types of scales are available and different types of severity levels are also defined. So low, medium, high, uh, uh, critical, then uh, um, we can have, let's say, uh, could be, uh, uh, less critical and, and then 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 so on so uh, th that's that's where uh, we can uh, define their factors if you see here uh, level four is very uh, is severe level three uh, let's say high level uh, two is 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 the medium and level one is green level zero is why uh, let's say baseline this is white so the, 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 these are the ways how uh, even if you see level five emergency that, that that's the black so the black, the red, the yellow, uh, I mean, and the, and the light yellow and, and the green and, and the white. So that, that's like, if it's a level five, that poses an imminent threat. So if any critical infrastructure is, is, is attacked, so maybe I think that that's the category uh, or let's say even ransomware is there, which uh, in, uh, in fact, um, how to say, uh, obstructs the functioning of, uh, let's say, um, critical systems, then it is into that category. If it's read likely to result in a significant impact to public health or safety, national security, economic security, foreign relations or civil liberties. So that's, this is what level four. But now the point to be taking here is that these severity levels, uh, we need to define uh, looking at these aspects and the 
accordingly the threats we can have into these categories okay now level three high orange uh, likely to result in a, a demonstrable impact to public health or safety national security economic security foreign relations so uh, that's that's how it goes on so it drills down to zero and this is unsubstantiated or inconsequential event that's level zero baseline wide so maybe uh, it doesn't require an immediate action but uh, of course it needs to be let's say taken into account and there is a need for uh, addressing even the level zero baseline uh, activity because it may let's say turn out to be um, severe at a later point of time okay so that's what uh, incident prioritization uh, here we, we, we are uh, talking about and now here if you see observed actions uh, intended a consequence so that, that's another way of defining effect cause physical consequence presence that's the corrupt or destroy data engagement is still sensitive so uh, this is again how we are uh, talking in terms of the actions and then also its intended consequence so, so that also comes into uh, the picture and and that kind of let's say uh, uh, classification and prioritization we have to have into your uh, incident plan okay so uh, let me move on uh, here uh, the same thing that's an example of canada uh, where we have been uh, talking about level one two three four so now you know what is in level one what is in level two what is in level three level four so that's how when somebody is going for the development of this kind of a cyber crisis management plan in their country then accordingly they need to move in these lines so where they're able to have that risk assessment done and accordingly they will be able to identify the the, the gaps and and then the issues and based on to that they uh, have the uh, different types of because once you do the gap assessment or risk assessment what do you get so you you you, you get that what kind of threats could uh, let's say uh, um, hamper uh, your your critical uh, infrastructures or what kind of threats you are seeing in your country because in 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 every country uh, let's say the cyber threat landscape is is a little bit different so there are certain uh, types of uh, incidents which are common but there are certain incidents which are less common in other country than your country so that's the reason why we need to have that level one two three four uh, classification uh, to be uh, done and and then uh, <clears throat> this is how we need to go on okay so let me let me move to the next slide and and that's uh, uh, declaring a national cyber incident so uh, for me to make you understand uh, this uh, particular slide uh, there is only uh, uh, one uh, easy way uh, is now we have reached a stage where we will be in a position to 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 see that um, after a classification of the incident after a prioritization of the incident after defining the severity level impact and the consequence now you have the let's say uh, a kind of a information availability on the basis of or data availability on the basis of which you can say that if this kind of incident struck my country then it becomes a national cyber incident this is the reason of 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 uh, doing the classification otherwise there was no need for us to do this and this is what has been said this is what has been said so if there is an incident of category 5 so is black if uh, let's say uh, you want to see this uh, slide here so level 5 emergency black so if it is black then normally if i come back here so if it is black then it you can always declare that is a national cyber incident where we need to address it immediately okay so this is what it says so declaring a national cyber incident so after the detection and analysis phase uh, whereby the scope impact and severity of an incident and its potential harm has been assessed you will be in a position to let's say say that this type of incidents or this type of incident will be called as a national cyber incident or declared as a national cyber incident okay now once this is declared then other things you need to have and what are those things 
those things are there. Now you need to have a sort of a mechanism in place which starts or, or which activates immediately to address this national cyber incident. And this is where we have been talking about the, the governance and the governance uh, uh, committee. Uh, this is where we have been talking about the uh, incident response teams. This is where we have been talking about the communication teams. Uh, and and uh, this is where we have been uh, talking about who should be sitting into these communication teams, who should be sitting into, uh, let's say, the uh, incident response team, uh, how the ISPs, how the law enforcement, how the national third, plus other stakeholders, we have been talking about those, that how the stakeholders, they should be identified. And after identification, all these stakeholders, they are the part of it, and they form the part of that team. So that's, that's, that's how the declaration of a national cyber incident will activate the national cyber crisis management plan. Because unless or until there is nothing of a national significance, it's not a national level cyber incident. That's what we're trying to make you understand, okay? So uh, with, with, with this slide, maybe uh, I'll, I'll move a little bit, uh, let's say uh, more uh, here. Uh, we are saying uh, declaring a national a cyber incident. So uh, I think that part is clear. Um, and, and this is much more like a theoretical part where a national cyber incident is declared if the severity level is high, very high or critical. So if, uh, if we talk about a scale of zero to five, so five, four, three is let's say critical, very high and high. Then two, one, zero uh, becomes let's say medium low and uh, let's say uh, very low. So this, this is what uh, is the scale which are normally used. And as I mentioned that many other scales are available of severity, which could be used by, let's say, uh, all those teams who wants to come up with, or let's say all those countries who wants to come up with this kind of a plan, right? So that, that's, that's how it works, okay? Now, if I get back to the, uh, incident documentation. This is also uh, an important part of it uh, because ultimately if I talk about uh, standard operating procedures, if I talk about the lessons learned, if I talk about the summary of the incident, if I talk about indicators uh, related to the incident, actions taken by all incident handlers on this incident. So this is much more like a post incident activity. And in the post incident activity, it should be documented. And if it is documented, this is, or this becomes kind of a, a reference document for us to learn uh, from this one and then to improve upon this one. Because uh, incident, the way uh, threat landscape is these days, uh, every here and then we see new types of threats and those new type of threats, once we start handling them, uh, at times it happens that team doesn't have much idea at how they'll be able to handle that. So if, if this is the case, then definitely uh, what is required here is the incident documentation. And that incident documentation, uh, let's say, consists of these, let's say, uh, points. The current status of the incident, a summary, already I've said. Also here in this chain of custody, if applicable, impact assessment, uh, related to the incident, all sorts of evidence gathered during incident investigation, comments from incident coordination team. So the, the, these are all important, uh, let's say, factors which should be documented about an incident. And this helps. So that's also forms part of the, let's say, incident handling cycle, okay? Uh, if, if you, uh, I move on further, uh, now, information sharing and communication. So this information sharing and communication, uh, this is also uh, very, very important because uh, information sharing, so uh, information sharing and communication here, we are talking much more in terms of uh, the uh, crisis situation. So in crisis situation, how information needs to be uh, shared and, and communicated to different teams and also at different levels. So one information sharing and communication at the level of the core team who is working in devising the incident. And another aspect of information sharing and communication is to the public, uh, 
uh, through the let's say uh, uh, the 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 um, responsible uh, institution or ministry or department or uh, let's say uh, national level institution uh, to pass on the message uh, to people uh, that what is happening but here we are much more focused on to how the information sharing and communication will be taking place within the team. If you see incident of national significance may be shared uh, to the following parties. So if I, let's say, uh, 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 take this uh, um, here. So if you look at uh, here, here we are. So we, we are talking about the uh, incident of national significance may be shared to the following parties. So uh, one is like uh, government bodies, law enforcement, uh, ISPs also because um, they, they uh, help you to uh, provide, let's say, uh, uh, evidence in terms of locks, media, uh, external parties like international service and uh, citizens, uh, customers or constituency members. So that's why, I mean, uh, from here to here, that's one level of communication, one type of communication. And for this, let's say, uh, for this particular audience, citizens, customers, or constituency members, that's the another level of communication. So here the communication for them is that uh, how you have to uh, make them uh, comfortable or, or, or you have to give them the assurance kind of a thing that the country or let's say the teams are working in order to, let's say, uh, stop that attack or let's say resolve that incident. That's one. But here we are talking much more, uh, let's say internally between these teams, uh, I think from here to here, uh, uh, I think uh, that's, that's the block which I wanted to uh, take it. And and this is between, uh, that, that's the incident handling team, if, if you see how they're doing it. Okay, that's, that's how it goes on. Now, if uh, I go further a little bit, uh, that's the uh, information sharing and communication, that's already uh, we have discussed. Uh, deliver a coordinated, a prompt, reliable, and actionable information to the whole community and the public as appropriate through the use of clear, consistent, accessible, and culturally and linguistically appropriate methods to effectively uh, relay information regarding significant threat. And that's why I said that we have to have a communication team. So communication team's role is to communicate with, let's say, different target audiences. Because technical people may not be having enough time in order to do so because they are busy with the resolution of the incident. And mostly technical guys, they, 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 they do not know how to write well, uh, meaning to say that their focus is the resolution and they are technically they are good, may not be linguistically they may be good. That's why communication people, they have to, uh, let's say, uh, capture the linguistic part and then, uh, uh, let's say, a draft a kind of a communicate or information or advisory uh, in such a way that is easy to understand uh, for uh, people uh, or uh, let's say uh, for general public and then they are able to understand that what is the line of action they need to take or let's say what is happening uh, on this incident um, at this point of time so that's that's what uh, information sharing and communication means here okay uh, I'll, I'll move on, uh, uh, information sharing using a traffic light protocol. We discussed, I think, we mentioned a number of times uh, since we have started, uh, let's say, this, this training program. Uh, and, and now already you know that, what is the importance of the traffic light protocol. And, and traffic light protocol is one of the standard protocols used and uh, recognized protocol by um, uh, first and, and many uh, other, uh, let's say, uh, institutions. Uh, where this standard protocol is used uh, in order to uh, correctly uh, represent the uh, classification information that could be uh, shared, uh, let's say, with different target audiences, right? That, that, that's the uh, important uh, role this protocol plays, and that's why we are using, uh, or we need to use, or we should be using traffic light protocol in order to do so, okay? So uh, I think coloring, uh, I think you all know, uh, it talks about, let's say, the the, uh, the 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 red, the amber, the <clears throat> the green, and the white. So uh, th these are the four colors which you already know, and and those colors uh, can be used for uh, different. Uh, let's see, if it's red, confidential, highly confidential. If it is amber, 
it could be shared between people and the organization within organizations if it is green then it could be shared by many more uh, on different target audiences if it's white then it becomes kind of a public um, information where you can always use it okay so uh, that's again there uh, this is where i think already uh, i have discussed in a way uh, much information because anyway we will be uh, sharing these slides to all the participants here so this is a tlp white slide uh, which you can always uh, go through and then uh, you can have a more idea uh, about red and amber and the green and the white. And accordingly, you can put into your, uh, let's say, uh, national cyber crisis management plan uh, in order to classify information accordingly. Okay. So uh, that's the uh, other uh, thing. And now um, phase three uh, talks about the uh, containment, uh, eradication and recovery. This is also an important phase of uh, this predator cycle. And, and, and uh, this cycle uh, is uh, where, uh, this phase I should say, is the phase where we try to, uh, let's say, get hold of the incident and we are able to uh, stop that incident uh, uh, from doing a further uh, damage to your data or information or your uh, systems, okay? That, that's what containment means. So if attack is coming, uh, if you can be able to stop that attack, that's what containment means here. And now eradication means that if there was a virus, which was, let's say, um, uh, allowing that, um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, damaging of that information, then we have removed that virus so that uh, our systems are functioning uh, properly and they, start, and they, they stop malfunctioning. So, and recovery means that we have been able to recover from the incident. And that's what uh, a cyber crisis management means. So in cyber crisis management means recovery a lot. Why? Because in this particular, uh, let's say recovery here, we are seeing recovery uh, to a certain, let's say extent. So we cannot have 100% recovery at one go. So it means that critical, let's say services, the critical, let's say, functions of the system, they are restored, they are working, and then slowly and slowly, let's say, we get back to the full recovery of the whole system working normally as it was working before the uh, attack was launched onto that particular system. So this means this here. So the purpose of this phase is to contain and mitigate the effects of incidents when they occur. So uh, that's, that's what uh, this uh, phase talks about. So I'll move um, because we are nearly uh, two and a half hours discussing this, uh, uh, this particular, uh, let's say, uh, topic. Uh, and, and here also containment, eradication, recovery. Uh, it talks about the containment strategies uh, vary based on the type of incident and may depend on the following potential damage, the need to uh, preserve evidence, uh, service availability, time and resources required, uh, effectiveness of the strategy and duration of the solution. And I think I discussed all on the previous slide. So uh, duration of the solution also, as I said that it, let's say, doesn't happen at one go and it takes time. So step by step and then slowly and slowly uh, it is restored fully, okay? Now here uh, also uh, uh, after an incident has been contained, um, eradication may be necessary to eliminate uh, components of the incident, such as removal of malicious components. So that's what eradication is. So containment happened, eradication uh, is, let's say, done in order to remove those uh, malicious traces uh, from the files or the uh, malicious uh, file uh, itself. And then once that is done, then the, let's say, incident has been uh, fully uh, eradicated. And uh, eradication recovery should be done in a phase approach so that uh, remediation steps are prioritized. So, and that's uh, something already we discussed, guys. Okay. And and that that was a post incident activity. And uh, I mentioned um, in the part of the documentation um, that uh, in the uh, documentation is important. So now incident happened. It was very critical. We have been able to uh, let's say uh, contain that incident. We have been able to educate that incident. We have been able to recover uh, fully. Then after that, uh, it is important that we document that incident. 
and documentation of that incident, it means that that's the lessons learned. So we, 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 we have learned this lesson from this, uh, let's say, uh, incident, uh, what was done, and, and uh, we analyze that, what was done, whether it was, uh, let's say, uh, 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 good or, 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 or uh, not satisfactory, and, and then we try to improve onto that. That's what post-incident activity means, and I think we all know here. So, but uh, meaning to say that this also should be forming the part of the, uh, your crisis management plan. So the post-event activity phase leverages not a knowledge gained from each cybersecurity event to ensure a continuous improvement of the cybersecurity incident response. And by extension, the security posture of the nation as a whole. So the purpose of this phase is to formally close out the cyber incident by conducting a post-event analysis. So I think that's just what uh, we have written here uh, for you to understand identifying lessons learned. So uh, I said that when applicable and driving changes to the uh, security policy, because this also uh, gives you an opportunity where you could see that uh, uh, what uh, went wrong and uh, what went wrong uh, is something what you need to improve on. And once you need to improve on, then you can analyze and review your security policy and then fine tune it accordingly, okay? So that's uh, what it says here, or enterprise security architecture improvements as required. Um, so number of things you can, let's say, uh, take into consideration into this particular phase as well. So I'll move on. Uh, that's the uh, post-incident uh, activity. That, that's an example of the Canadian uh, cybersecurity event management uh, plan. So uh, just to give you uh, of uh, some uh, sort of uh, uh, idea, uh, what does it mean? Affected departments and agencies. So uh, we'll produce their own departmental lessons, learn report and action plan and contribute to government of uh, Canada wide post event activities as required. Now, government of Canada and computer incident response will collate all departmental findings and produce a post event report. So it means that different stakeholders, they have the uh, uh, different responsibility of uh, let's say post incident activity, and accordingly they will do that. Uh, Treasury Board of uh, Canada uh, Secretariat, and that's uh, uh, something Chief Information Officer Branch will produce a lesson learned report and action on behalf of the government of Canada, and monitor implementation of the recommendations. If you see now the Government Operations Center, and this. The government operations center will produce a lesson learned report and so all these different stakeholders they uh, have been entrusted with the responsibility where they will be coming up with the let's say lessons learned and accordingly they will be let's say uh, submitting it to uh, uh, wherever they need to submit that okay uh, now if i take an example so if we are having the national cyber security committee so the lessons learned should also be sent to that National Cybersecurity uh, Committee to see that uh, what was the uh, cause of the incident and then uh, how it has happened. So everything is tabulated. Now, based on to that, they could also sit and see that what kind of improvement. So recommendations also could get into the post-incident activity after discussing it with that kind of a committee. And this is where you start improving onto your uh, different policies or security, let's say policies you have in place, okay? So uh, mm, let me move on. Uh, that's uh, something uh, mm, uh, finishes the part of how uh, do we uh, design uh, the, the, the uh, plan. Uh, so uh, what I'll do is here is that maybe um, I will uh, in a way open it up uh, because we have been talking for nearly uh, more than an hour or so. Uh, so if, if there are, uh, let me open the floor. Uh, can I see the uh, questions? Um, okay. So I can stop uh, sharing. I can see some questions. There are two questions like here. Uh, yeah, there were the same, same two questions. So any, anyone wants to, to, uh, ask questions now because uh, we can open the floor. Any, any anybody? So 
So anyone has uh, any questions so far? So maybe, maybe we can uh, keep it uh, interactive. We can talk to uh, each other because uh, uh, we understand and we hope that you are understanding what we are talking about. Uh, but I think it is good if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hands and then maybe we can discuss. So if you ask questions, then maybe I can uh, explain you uh, much more uh, beyond the slides, uh, how it happened. But anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about um, that uh, one uh, good example uh, that how it has been implemented um, and, and then how it takes a shape. Okay. So any, 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 any uh, questions? Uh, but I don't see any questions so far. Uh, anyone wants to ask anything? Okay. So if, if there are no questions, so uh, then maybe in that case, what uh, we can do is that we can break quickly for another five minutes. Uh, and then oh, we can take up the last part of this discussion uh, of let's say testing implementation and monitoring of the plan. So, and that could be a discussion of another half an hour or so. And then uh, we can uh, discuss that and give an example and uh, we can take up uh, the questions. And after that, maybe we can uh, close um, the session for, for, for this training, okay? All right. So if there are no questions, uh, we take a break. So it's nearly uh, uh, around, uh, uh, if, if I, uh, something like in Mauritius, uh, uh, 5.35. Mm, so in five minutes from now, uh, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be back. So see you in five minutes.
so then guys uh, welcome back uh, uh, hope you had some uh, time to just let's say uh, stretch your legs a little bit and and then grab some uh, tea or coffee uh, so now i think that this is the last part of uh, the discussion of this training program where we will be uh, talking about uh, the uh, testing implementation and, and monitoring of, let's say, the National Cyber Crisis Management Plan. So, but before uh, we go again, uh, I'd like to open the floor once again, if, if you have any questions, somebody in mind where um, you have been, uh, ref, uh, ha had some reflection to ask, uh, then we can take it up uh, now, or even at the end of the session, that's also a possibility. Okay, so it looks like again that and there, there, there are no uh, questions. So if there are no questions, so I can, I can uh, start with uh, this discussion uh, where uh, we can uh, talk about uh, the implementation part of it. Okay, implementation, testing and maintaining the plan. So now it's a very clear cut thing, uh, you, you now you know, uh, that any uh, national cyber uh, crisis management plan, uh, how uh, uh, it is written, this is one. Secondly, also uh, how, uh, what contains, uh, what elements uh, it should have. Okay, uh, that's, that's the second thing. Uh, and, and the third thing is the implementation, okay. So for, for, for the implementation, uh, what is normally required here is, uh, if I show you this later slide, so a setting up, up of the governance committee. So after the national cyber crisis management plan has been developed and approved by the government, uh, its implementation and execution starts. So that's, that's what, and that's one thing what we're trying to say. It consists of the following steps and most of it uh, we uh, uh, have discussed initially, but I think uh, here we'll be uh, elaborating much more so that you uh, understand uh, how it can be done. So first of all, now already we know that what governance committee does. So for the implementation, uh, there are two things. The first thing is that if you do not uh, have that governance committee, so, and if it forms a part of your uh, national cyber crisis management plan, then you, you need to set it up. Or if there is already a national level governance committee, which looks after uh, the issues of uh, cybersecurity and cyber crime or coordination, then uh, maybe that committee itself can assume the role uh, of, let's say, coordinating the national cyber crisis management plan. So it's either way, it can be done. So that's, that's the first thing. Uh, and that committee, what will be their role is to overseeing the execution of that national cyber crisis management plan and facilitating monitoring, control and uh, transmission of decisions. So that, that's uh, uh, what basically uh, this committee uh, should do, facilitation, uh, facility, uh, facilitation, control and transmission uh, of decisions. Now, second thing what uh, has to be done is the formation of incident coordination and communication team. Meaning to say that all the stakeholders uh, who uh, form part of this, this is one. But again, at the same time, now we need to uh, look at that uh, in the incident coordination, so it means the incident response. So you can also call it as incident response. So that, that needs to be set up from different stakeholders. So now uh, it's good for you to know that who should be part of it. Uh, there can be a person from uh, the national cert. There can be a person from the uh, incident, uh, sorry, internet service providers, ISPs. There can be a person from law enforcement. So, because uh, that, this triangle is always required for any incident resolution at the country level, or even let's say at the, uh, let's say uh, if country wants to 
escalate that incident to another level. And communication team. So I previously, I mean, I have been talking about the designing of, let's say that uh, plan. So we discuss about a little bit of communication team. So communication team's role here is of to fully address and pass on the information to different people uh, and not different people, but uh, let's say to people in uh, uh, to, to the public or to the citizens that uh, what is the situation like? So communication team, one communication team within the, uh, let's say a coordination team and one communication team, especially uh, that's more like a PR team, which uh, let's say deals with the issues, uh, which deals the issues uh, with the public, okay? That's, that's the second thing. Now the, uh, the, the third, thing, uh, third thing here is that uh, venue for holding meetings during a cyber crisis, okay? So venue for holding meetings uh, during a cyber crisis. So this also should be a clearly um, mentioned into let's say the, the, the plan that where you are going to hold meetings. So everything is set. Nothing is like when something uh, uh, strikes or strikes, then we see a where we are going to meet, no. So that's why this is a structured approach of incident resolution. That's why we need this plan, otherwise that's not required. So once emergency is there, nobody has time to think. So once you do not have time to think, then uh, you will not be able to coordinate in that situation. So in order to coordinate properly, what is required is that you have the procedures and the plans and the teams and the governance committee all set, defined, structured, uh, uh, documented, so that we know that uh, where to go, whom to call, and when to call, and from where to call. And then also the regular review of the plan. So I'll be talking a little bit later that how can you review that, okay? So that's what uh, the implementation uh, and execution, uh, let's say, starts this way. Okay, and these are the steps for the implementation and execution of, let's say, this plan, whatever we are talking about. And uh, now the uh, testing the national uh, cyber uh, crisis management plan. This is another good step, which I think we all should be understanding. After the implementation process, the next step is to test the plan. How do you test? How effective is your plan? This is what we need to see. And, and then uh, for testing, there are different things. For testing, you need to uh, have some sort of a simulation exercise. You can have some sort of, a, let's say, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, drills, uh, which we can uh, uh, have with the uh, stakeholders and then uh, the community um, so that you know that how effective uh, your plan is working. So, uh, for example, uh, in, in, in Mauritius, uh, when we have been uh, testing, so we, we have tested with the, uh, let's say the government sector. So even um, according to the scenarios, we can always do that. And that scenario was like um, uh, everybody's uh, salary payday. So it was much more like a scenario like that. So uh, most of the people, they get their salaries around 26th, 27th, 27th of the month and uh, between 27th to let's say 30th of the month. And, and then what happens that if during this time, uh, there's an attack on to all the commercial banks or let's say um, major um, system of the uh, commercial bank, uh, which serves let's say most of the uh, uh, people in the country and then um, how to manage that. Plus, um, maybe we can have uh, some sort of a, um, uh, simulation for our critical systems, like a SCADA systems of uh, different uh, sectors, especially for electrical um, grids and, and, and um, SCADA system for water supply. So this testing the plan yield two important results, if you see. 
a clear understanding of whether your plan is likely to work and identification of the gaps in the plan and address them accordingly. So uh, like cyber drills, which, which are done, similar kind of a thing, or any, any plane drill which we carry out for fire drill, uh, if you see fire drill is carried out, we know why it is carried out, just to look at the how effectively our processes are working when we are conducting that drill. So if in case a fire erupts, then we know that yes, it is working. So uh, same same uh, concept. I think you all know. Um, maybe I don't have to elaborate more than that. Uh, you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, uh, it's it's like uh, that's another rational for testing a national cyber uh, crisis um, management uh, plan. So I think it's a typo for uh, twice I've written the cyber. Sorry for that. Uh, to uh, assess the ability of a nations to coordinate response to uh, cyber emergency situations. I think I have already said this. So uh, this slide uh, gives you more, uh, let's say, understanding uh, what happens uh, into testing. To assess the ability of the governing body committee responsible for national incident response as a leading authority. That's also, uh, we can do that. To assess the impact of a serious cyber or critical uh, situation affecting a country. So I give the example of SCADA systems. To test a tasking and guidance needed to resolve a cyber incidents. Okay. And, and then also to assess strategic information sharing and, and, and communication with internal and, and external stakeholders, uh, partners and, 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 and other parties and to identify any gaps in the plan and improve incident resolution. So uh, I think uh, we discussed, uh, we, uh, you have understanding now, uh, but let's say uh, uh, if you see the rational for testing um, of uh, this particular plan is in these lines, okay? So uh, if I need to move on, uh, this I think already uh, we discussed how to test the national cyber crisis management plan, I said that. Uh, through cybersecurity exercises, uh, could be of let's say tabletop exercises for the top management. Uh, and top management means here uh, we can have the category of the uh, National Cybersecurity Committee. Uh, plus, uh, that committee could invite um, uh, other uh, extended members, and those extended members uh, they could uh, let's say uh, form part of it. And once they uh, form part of it, um, then uh, that kind of exercise could happen with them to understand that um, because. Uh, why for the top management? Because they, they make decisions. And um, in uh, this uh, situation, uh, decision is important. And once decision, decision is important, they should be, uh, uh, let's say, knowing uh, for different, let's say, types of incident, what decisions to make. That's, that's uh, one uh, good example. Like even we all know that in this COVID, uh, uh, let's say, um, era, Every country has, a, 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 let's say, a top level committee, uh, which uh, deals with the uh, whole coordination of uh, the situation uh, uh, evolves um, for, uh, let's say, co uh, COVID uh, cases, COVID vaccination. So all, everything is done through. So I mean, it's a top level, um, top notch committee in every country, every country has that. So similar kind of a thing. Now, even in COVID, um, that's not connecting to the subject here, but I think you all know in COVID, uh, since uh, people are working remotely, um, now the even uh, threats they have increased to few folds in every country. So th this is one of the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in a way scenario, I could say uh, fits in uh, for our uh, testing. Technical exercises are also important because this is important for the technical team, uh, incident response or coordination team, which is working onto that. So another effective way to test the incident response plan is to simulate a real attack to see how stakeholders of the plan will be will 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 will, will respond. And these tests not only evaluate what incident coordination team would do when faced up against a major incident, but how they uh, could do it. So that's. Uh, you understand what I'm trying to say, and that what um, technical exercises normally do different things. They also, uh, let's say, test your preparedness, how, um, let's say, the best uh, uh, team is prepared to respond to an incident. So that's another 
uh, capacity you'll be able to test with the uh, technical exercises and which very much forms the part of the uh, testing of uh, national uh, cyber crisis management plan okay so i move on uh, to the uh, execution again i think uh, this is we're continuing here uh, so execution of a national uh, cyber crisis management plan uh, consists of the steps the nation will take when an incident. So I think uh, we have already said this. National significance has been detected. This phase activates the uh, national cyber uh, incident response plan uh, and involves uh, invoking all the measures listed uh, in the plan. So um, that happens. Uh, so uh, I move on. Uh, here, if you see, the execution of the National Cyber Incident Response Plan, the same way as I said. So we defined there. So if you look at the previous document, so this is the execution of National Cyber Incident Response Plan during a cyber crisis. So level one, level two, level three, and level four. So these are all escalation and response levels. So in level one, uh, we talked about are the following conditions met, uh, threats and vulnerabilities, uh, incidents, and, and then indicators uh, or broader propagation. So there, there are uh, assessments and that's where we need to do the, do the analysis. So once we analyze and we see that uh, uh, th this is a threat and that's a critical threat and it needs to be mitigated. Now, if let's say we need to move further um, and, and, and that requires further, uh, let's say, uh, uh, involvement of different teams and different uh, other people from the committee, then it goes to the next level. Are the following conditions met? Threats and vulnerabilities, uh, imminent threat of high plus impact to one or more departments, high exposure. So this is where once we have been doing the classification, so and the, uh, let's say, uh, uh, priority and the severity, so we're analyzing. So after the analysis, the more critical it is, we just keep on moving unless or until we are not able to, let's say, resolve or contain it. Contain and resolve it. So are the following, now, if you look at the level three, are the following conditions met? So threats uh, not applicable in compromise affecting delivery of many mission critical program services resulting in severe injury, wide spread propagation. So now here again, so yes, escalated to level four. So federal emergency response plan, so uh, that's uh, government of Canada, DM and cabinet committees. So I think these are different uh, committees where, uh, let's say, uh, uh, which is connected to the federal emergency response plan. And they, they, they look at that and it's much more like a national cyber security committee what we have been talking about. So uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's how uh, it, 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 it goes on uh, and, and, and um, that's how it moves, okay? So uh, that, that's the example uh, here, uh, and, and uh, I, I move on uh, to the next uh, slide here, review and uh, maintenance of a national uh, cyber uh, crisis management plan. So uh, this one is much more like for effective incident response uh, at national level. Uh, a national cyber crisis management plan should be reviewed and updated regularly. So, um, that's uh, something we discussed before, and uh, you understand it now. Uh, the revision process includes developing or updating any process pertaining to the incident response capabilities which can affect the plan, okay? Uh, any significant update should be vetted by stakeholders with the governing body or committees responsible for uh, NCMP, so um, National uh, Cyber Crisis Management Plan. So that's the uh, normally is done in every uh, how to say plan because if there is a change um, that uh, change is uh, has to be vetted and once let's say uh, it is fully um, agreed uh, then uh, it is integrated so um, that's how it works the review process so uh, something uh, which is uh, important for us to do but it's good that once we do then normally we'll be able to learn better uh, so uh, why we have to review and maintain of the national cyber uh, crisis management plan of course it's a long list but the gist here is uh, 
uh, we need to review and maintain so that it is always <coughs> effective and efficient and it is up to date. So up to date here means that we saw an incident uh, struck the country, we have been able to contain and, and, and eliminate and eradicate. And then we learn from that. And once we have learned from that, then that goes as part of the, uh, let's say, review process as a post, let's say, incident activity. And then if there is a need to be changed into that plan in terms of the actions or let's say the stakeholders actions or uh, other people who are involved and if some uh, new, um, uh, let's say uh, some uh, new functions needs to be brought uh, for incident, into the incident response team or let's say the communication team or in uh, national, uh, let's say uh, cybersecurity committee where we have to have, uh, let's say some more uh, people of different area to understand that then uh, we normally uh, look at it. So uh, that's, that's, that's how, uh, uh, what and is the reason we should be reviewing and maintaining our uh, national cyber uh, crisis management plan, okay? So, and if you see assess and update information on the capabilities and support of a cyber incident response goals and objectives, a simulation exercise will help for uh, the capability assessment. So uh, that's clearly said, I think you understand that part. Update processes based on changes in the national cyber threat or hazard environment. I say that again, because cyber threat landscape changes with time. And if it changes with time, that also needs to be reflected because uh, these are live documents. So, or they are, let's say, I mean, living documents. And, and these living documents, they needs to, or they need to be uh, reviewed uh, on a regular basis or periodically so that they are effective. Once, let's say, we have to deal with the uh, incident of national significance, okay? Now, uh, incorporate lessons learned and effective uh, practices from day-to-day -day operations, exercises, and actual incidents and alerts. Uh, that's, that's also uh, something already uh, we have been uh, talking about it uh, here. And adapt to opportunities and challenges that arise as technology evolves and changes. Uh, okay. Um, reflect progress in nation cyber incident response mission activities, the need to execute the new laws and strategic changes to national priorities or national capabilities. And, and lessons learned from cyber exercises or real world incidents. So these are uh, the elements, as I said before, should be in here. Okay, I'll, I'll move on. And, and, and this one much more like I wanted to uh, share uh, some uh, part of uh, uh, an example. Uh, so uh, with the Mauritian experience or, or uh, this could, let's say, be uh, mapped to or, or modeled um, for any other, uh, let's say, similar country of, let's say, this type. So Mauritius is a small country um, and, and uh, very, very small, in fact. Uh, and uh, here we are having this uh, National Cyber Incident Response Plan. We do, we do not call it as a uh, cyber crisis management plan. We more uh, call it as a National Cyber Incident Response Plan. And uh, in terms of a governance committee, we're having the uh, National Disaster Cyber Security and Cyber Crime Committee. Uh, which is an apex committee and is role is to coordinate and monitor the cyber crisis uh, situation. That, that's one. So uh, when we were talking about the governance, so for the governance committee, we are having NDCCC. Okay, uh, it comprises of different members from the public and the private sector. So there are nine permanent and twenty-one extended members. So it's it's like a uh, uh, committee uh, which have uh, which has many extended members. Uh, and they will be opted uh, in depending on the nature of the incident. So if let's say uh, it, it, it connects to a hospitality um, sector. So maybe a representative of hospitality sector could be called in that particular, let's say uh, uh, crisis meeting um, with the nine permanent members uh, to discuss onto the issue of that sector. That's what uh, we mean to say here. Now, uh, NDCC is uh, chaired by the Minister of IT or Permanent Secretary, depending on the uh, severity of incident. So we, we, we are having a scale of one to five here, uh, not let's say five to zero to five. So our scale is one to five. Uh, one is the least critical, five is the most critical. So uh, if there is an incident of magnitude five, four, that's, that's uh, something uh, uh, addressed by the, uh, chaired by the minister. If there is, let's say, three to one, 
then um, normally uh, not one in fact uh, three or, or 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 two even so if it's three uh, then it is going to be chaired by the permanent secretary if it's one it doesn't go anywhere it is is managed by the national cert and, and the other stakeholders who are the part of let's say the whole resolution uh, incident resolution uh, let's say team or incident response team so these people they sit together they try to resolve that incident so that's one a very a uh, good example for you to understand uh, how uh, it works, okay? Uh, now, if I uh, uh, get back to uh, uh, the other slide, so the, 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 the plan defines the incident response and public relations, uh, and we have been talking about this, and, and um, the incident response team, you know now what it is, public relations team, again, now you know what it is, and uh, incident response team comprises of national cert, IT, uh, security unit of the Ministry of IT, Mauritius Police Force, and Internet Service Providers. So that's how the composition of the team looks like. Okay. Now, uh, public relations team consists of communication persons from the minister's office, uh, the government information system unit, uh, a representative of the uh, PMO, and also a representative from uh, incident response team. Thus. Uh, mm, uh, public relations teams um, why we have uh, technical people also in that to guide the let's say communications team how to let's say uh, translate uh, uh, the technical terms into a simple form so that people outside could understand location to hold meetings during the cyber crisis is the office of the ministry of it so this also is fixed if it happens it happens here okay now a few uh, let's say more things i wanted to uh, share uh, now we uh, have also uh, been using the TLP. TLP is used for the information exchange. So this is already clearly defined uh, <clears throat> what TLP and uh, classification. Uh, five level of severity is defined. That's already have said. Uh, level two severity incidents will be uh, coordinated under the chairmanship of the PS. So two, three, PS, three, five, uh, let's say, uh, uh, is, 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 uh, will be coordinated under the chairmanship of the minister. Okay. So I think uh, three, five. Yes. So three. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, just let's say some uh, technical difficulties we got. Um, so level three, five uh, severity incidents will be uh, coordinated under the chairmanship of the minister. So uh, three, five is uh, for the minister and, and then uh, two is for the PS. So uh, that's I think on the previous slide, I said four, five. No, it's not four, five, it's three, five. So three to five uh, is where the minister chairs the uh, committee. And then the testing of the plan, uh, let's say, uh, Mm, is done on a regular basis uh, and have this provision has uh, been made at the level of the national cert and, and uh, execution, uh, let's say, of the plan um, is done on a regular basis. So this is like a periodical um, execution we are talking about, okay? Uh, in, in the next, uh, let's say, uh, uh, here also uh, we, important considerations to set up a national level committee, which members who have the experience and understanding of uh, cyber threat handling and resolution to assess the capacity of the team, which will deal with incident during the cyber crisis. So um, these are a few things uh, which uh, uh, let's say could be considered once, let's say we are uh, talking about um, the incident response plan to assess the information sharing and communication efficiency of the public relations team. So this is what we have done. And, and then uh, here uh, we uh, are, let's say, uh, in a way, uh, end of, let's say, uh, this discussion of uh, implementation uh, and testing and, 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 and monitoring. So uh, in, in a way, uh, we have been able to uh, discuss uh, uh, the a whole uh, understanding of how uh, a national cyber crisis management plan uh, normally um, what it is, uh, how it should be designed, uh, how it should be implemented, tested, and uh, monitored 
Uh, plus, uh, we have given you an example uh, of Mauritius, um, how uh, that plan um, has been implemented. So I believe that with this, uh, you uh, have a clear idea, at least the basic understanding, uh, what national uh, cyber crisis management uh, plan looks like and, and uh, how it is uh, written. So uh, with this, uh, maybe uh, again, uh, we have reached to uh, an end of, let's say the training, but uh, uh, still we have some uh, 45 minutes uh, and, and we are very much open to any discussion anyone wants to uh, have uh, from the participants. And uh, we'll be happy to uh, take any questions. Uh, we'll be happy to, uh, happy to discuss more around this. Uh, and um, we, 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 uh, we're available. So let me open the floor now. Uh, and, and if there are any questions, please do ask. So I think there were some uh, questions uh, by Mustafa. Uh, 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 I think we have answered those questions while discussing the second part of um, the uh, uh, training program where we have been talking about the design, uh, how the uh, national cyber crisis management uh, plan is normally designed, how can we, uh, what are the elements and, and uh, how the uh, classification how the uh, priority, how the uh, severity level is, is, is defined, okay? So if, if there are any more questions, uh, uh, we'll be happy to assist and answer. So looks looks like there are no questions, and if if there are no questions, then maybe you know we have reached to the end of let's say this uh, training uh, program, and uh, we uh, would like to thank uh, let's say uh, Josh from uh, first, uh, as well as the interpreters who have been with us uh, for all this uh, three hour fifteen minutes nearly. Uh, in a way, or let's say three hours, because we had some break in between. Uh, so we are thankful to them as well, uh, who have been uh, helping us all the way for um, French speaking uh, participants. And uh, I hope uh, this training um, has been uh, useful for all the participants who have been present here today. And um, on behalf of uh, the National Cert in Mauritius, Mm -hmm. I thank everyone uh, to be present, including my colleague here, Janita. Yes. And maybe back to uh, George.